Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the West. I think, you know, being able to win a championship, uh, you know, in a Texas Ranger uniform, you know, means a, a whole heck of a lot. And, you know, that's, that's what I want to be a part of. And, and that's what I want to, uh, you know, help these guys do. Baseball is presented by AT&T, Ubers TV. Now you heard the words of the uh, newest Ranger, Cole Hamels. His words certainly inspire hope, and we'll see what his fastballs do tonight to the San Francisco Giants. It's game two of this three-game series. And welcome in, everyone, along with Tom Green, Steve Busby. Glad you joined us. A very special Saturday night here at Globe Life Park in Arlington. Our first look in person. At Cole Hamilton. It promises to be a good evening, Tom. It sure does, Buzz. It's exciting. Can't wait for it to get started. Everybody knows that Cole Hamels is an excellent pitcher and that this was a great acquisition by the Rangers. We're going to show four or five points about Cole Hamels to kind of accentuate that. He's pitched on the highest stage very successfully. He's been a World Series MVP. He's been an all-star. He's been durable. He's given his team innings, 200 or more innings, six times. He's a strikeout pitcher. Only a couple of pitchers since 2006 have struck out more batters than he has. He's also a winner. 114 wins in that time, second most among National League pitchers. So this is a quality guy. Don't judge him by one game tonight. I mean, I'm hoping for another no-hitter, too, <laughs> but just judge him over the long haul. He's going to be a great acquisition. A W would be just That'd fine, be I think. You get that off to the right start here at Globe Life Park. It's going to be a great night, so hang around, get a sandwich, and sit back and enjoy it along with us. Rangers and Giants coming up next on Fox Sports Southwest. you buy your Texas Ford dealers. 
Visit your local Texas Ford dealer to kick off the summer right. Ford is the best in Texas. By AT&T, U-verse TV. U-verse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. By Budweiser, make a plan to make it home. And by Southwest Airlines, book your low fare now at southwest.com. Great evening here at Globe Live Park in Arlington. Cole Hamels on the hill. All the Rangers, before we get underway, let's head down and check in with Emily Jones. Well, Buzz, obviously Cole Hamels making his Texas debut is the big story here tonight. A lot of anticipation. We know a lot about Cole from what we've seen in his time with the Phillies, but we wanted to get maybe a little deeper with his former Phillies teammate and now current Rangers teammate, Jake Diekman. He wants to win every single game. Uh, he's a competitor. I feel like he gets a lot stronger during the, the whole game. Um, in the sixth, seventh, eighth inning, he's still going to get stronger. Uh, he makes his pitches great. He's a great teammate. Uh, works his butt off, and uh, he's done his entire career, which is good. Definitely a glowing scouting report from his teammate, both here in Texas and, of course, in Philadelphia. Excited to see it on display in a Rangers uniform here tonight and for years to come. Buzz. All right, Emily, and by the way, Em, uh, happy birthday, and thanks for coming out on your special night. We appreciate having you out here. Thank you very much. 31 right. feels great. I, I was going to say 29. You're doing pretty Let's well. Let's go with 29. that. Okay. Let's go with All right. Now Cole Hamill's getting set to uh, get underway, and Tom's going to tell you about the San Francisco Giants lineup that he will face. Angel Pagan leads off. Joe Panic, who has the ninth best batting average in the National League and was an all-star, hit second. Matt Duffy is third. Buster Posey, 11 for 21 against Cole Hamill's is the cleanup hitter. Hunter Pence is fifth. Justin Maxwell is sixth, followed by Brandon Belt. Brandon Crawford is the shortstop. 16 home runs, 64 RBIs. That's the most in the major leagues for a shortstop, followed by the catcher, Hector Sanchez. 0-1 is the count, and uh, Cole Hamels comes back, paints the inside corner, and just like that, he gets the crowd behind him. A couple of quick strikes to Angel Pagan. Now, Cole Hamels, the 31-year-old out of San Diego, California. He had uh, been drafted and developed by the Philadelphia Phillies. Fouled back. And our progressive scouting report, give you a few more details about Cole Hamels. You see the record... Uh, 364 ERA, but that is trending downward. A very live, moving fastball, an outstanding changeup. Some people have said maybe the best changeup in baseball. And as good a competitor as there is, and that is a great way to start your Texas Ranger career. Cole Hamels with a punch out. Well, he gave Pagan a fastball on the 0-2 pitch that he fouled off. He wasn't going to give him another fastball. He went to the changeup, and it's a good one. And Pagan obviously couldn't make the adjustment and ends up with a strikeout. We talk about the changeup that Hamels has being one of the best. And there's a good example of it. Heard guys say that he could tell you it's coming and you still <laughs> would have a hard time hitting it. That's a good changeup. Yeah. And Joe Panic sees strike one. Panic, a 308 hitter, seven home runs, 34 driven in. Nice on base percentage in the mid 370s for Panic. In tight. Hamels had a kind of a bad taste in his mouth the last time that he faced. This San Francisco Giants ball club gave up 12 runs or two, uh, 12 hits and nine runs to them. Uh, the first part of July in AT&T Park in San Francisco. That was the uh, most that he has given up to a ball club this year. So he's trying to get back on the winning side. He's six and four lifetime against the Giants. Now back to the screen and the count is two balls and two strikes. Giants batters in that game against him in uh, San Francisco were 12 for 21. It's hard to imagine a guy with his stuff having anybody go 12 for 21 against him, but days like that happen. Chopper to the left side. Elvis has it. Two gone. Take a look at the Ranger defense tonight. It's delivered to you by Fred Loya Insurance. Outfield, it's a speedy one for the Rangers. And Hamilton to Shields and Chu. Shin Tzu back in the lineup. Infield, Moreland back at first. Odor and Andrews. Beltre and 
third base, and Bobby Wilson is catching tonight. For Cole Hamels, uh, Robinson Torinas, in case you missed it, had to go on the disabled list this afternoon with a uh, strained left shoulder. Heard that uh, a couple of nights ago. A matter of fact, on the back on the 29th of the month, swinging a bat, and uh, well, they're going to give Torinos an opportunity to get that uh, mended. Matt Duffy takes inside. That evens the count now. One ball, one strike. Duffy, a 3.03 hitter. Nine home runs, 46 driven in that 303 average. Highest among National League rookies. That is a good change. <laughs> yeah, when you see a guy throwing 94 miles an hour with that kind of a changeup, the thing that occurs to me is glad I didn't have to hit against him. <laughs> I couldn't hit a changeup in a million years. One, two, grounded up the middle. Elvis dives up, throwing, got him. Oh, what a play by Elvis Andrews. There you go, Mr. Hamels. He got a little defense behind him. Elvis has been on fire. He continues it here tonight. A one, two, three, first inning for Hamels. No score. Now, here's Tom with the Southwest Airlines Rangers lineup. Delano DeShields leads off. He's hit 321 in his last 14 ball games. Rupnet Odor is second, followed by Prince Fielder. Adrian Beltre will hit fourth. Had a big two run homer last night in the first inning. Mitch Moreland is fifth. Josh Hamilton is sixth. Shin Su Chu has had RBIs in eight of his last 10 games. He'll hit seventh. Elvis Andrus. 343 in his last 17 games had a home run and a double last night against Madison Bumgarner. He'll hit eight, followed by one of the newest Rangers, the catcher, Bobby Wilson. All right, John, thank you. And here is Delano to Shields to start things off. And uh, Chris Heston of uh, no hit fame back in uh, June. Fires ball one. Heston, average stuff, maybe a little above average, very good sinker. But uh, he really can be classified as a crafty right hand. Most of the time, that's a, a left-hander turn, but uh, he changes speeds extremely well, has uh, command of both sides of the plate. And again, that sinker is his big pitch. You really need to try and get the ball up in the strike zone if you expect to do much against Chris Heston. Two balls and a strike to Delino. The Shields hitting 276. And a two-hopper out to Crawford at short. One gone. Well, Delino grounds out, and now Rugnet Odor coming up. Take a look at the Giants' defense, and it is uh, among the best in the National League. Giants' uh, fourth in fielding percentage in the senior circuit. Outfield to Sidney Maxwell gets a start in left field. Pagan and Pence join him. 49 errors, that's the third fewest in the uh, National League. Same infield as last night, Belt Panic, Crawford, and Duffy with Hector Sanchez catching. Odor takes the first pitch high for ball one. 
Grove had a three hit night last night. Well, he snapped a, a pretty lengthy 0 for that he had going. Like an 0 for 14 with those three hits. One ball, one strike here. Last night was Odor's seventh three hit game of the year already. That's second most among the uh, among Rangers. And don't forget, Rugnet missed a month of Major League time when he went, uh, no, actually, it was six weeks. Went down to AAA at the end of April. When he came back, though, he has made up for lost time. That number right there, that 333 mark since the All Star break. Four home runs, 10 driven in, and uh, part of that getting him the American League Player of the Week last week. One ball, two strikes. Out of play to the left. Uh, it'd be an interesting question, Buzz, whether the Giants, throughout Chris Heston's minor league career, felt that he would come to the big leagues and have this kind of an impact. You never know if the guy's going to throw a no-hitter, whether he's a top prospect or not, but to come up and go 11-5 and five with an ERA of 314, he's a kid that pitched a long time in the minor leagues. Mm -hmm. He had 765 minor league innings. A 27-year-old rookie. Pulled foul outside first. Well, they couldn't have thought too highly of him because they uh, designated him for assignment <laughs> back in 2013. There, there's the answer. And uh, apparently he's changed a lot. Kubota Power stats will tell you the 22nd pitcher in Major League history to throw a no-hitter in his rookie season. First uh, rookie to turn that trick since 2007. Clay Buckholz did it for the Red Sox. Uh, and I was reading about uh, testing. I'd never seen him before. And that was one of the things that stuck out to me. He's designated for assignment. Got released after he came off that designation. Uh, and now, a year and a half later, he's up here throwing no hitters. Uh, he, he's, he is obviously a guy who's refined his pitches. Maybe the changeup is more effective or a little bit new. That last curveball he threw looked like a frisbee the way it yeah. broke. So while, you know, there's a, a case to be made for guys to throw 95 miles an hour, He's a case to be made for you don't have to throw 90 miles an hour to be successful if you can make the ball move change speeds and throw it where you want to. Prince Fielder hits one right off the end of the bat foul. Tony Beasley down there will make a nice play on it. Prince now down in the count no balls two strikes. Fielder with the average down to 326 and that's as low as it's been since the second day of the season. Still third in the American League. Up the middle, a base hit for Fielder. Well, Prince took that 0-2 pitch that uh, Heston tried to sneak by him inside. Said, no, you're not going to do that. And that breaks an 0-9 for streak that uh, Prince was in. Well, Heston has a high ground ball rate. Kind of like Giovanni Gallardo. 56, 57 percent of ground balls. That pitch didn't look like it was designed to get a ground ball. High pitch. It's a little hard to make the harder, isn't it, to make the ball sink when it's chest high than if it's knee high? Yeah, Is I that think, true I, or not? I think most guys that, that throw a sinker would tell you that uh, when they get the ball up above belt high, it doesn't have nearly the movement on it. Yeah. Well, here's Adrian, a 259 average and a three hit game last night. It is uh, eighth home run of the year. A two run blast in that first inning. Adrian, uh, career wise, that was a home run number 403. Takes the pitch high and tight. And does that little toe tamping dance? 403 home runs for Adrian, 53rd all time. And he is on the way up. Last 18 ball games, we've seen Adrian really start to uh, get things together offensively. There's that big sweeper you're talking about, Tom. That frisbee of a breaking ball. I think when you've got the pitches that he has. And you're a hitter seeing him for the first time. It, a little bit of an education the first time through the lineup. I think as a hitter, you pretty much hope you see the sinker, you see the changeup, and you see the breaking ball all in the first at bat. So yeah. you've got a little bit of an idea what you're going to see the rest of the game. A broken bat looper in the center. That's going to fall for a base hit. And I guess if you wanted to add one more point to that, see all the pitches and get a base hit too. Yep. Yeah, that'll cap off a good first at bat. 
12 back-to-back two-out singles. Mitch Borland now will come up. Ranger Bat Boy out there to collect the uh, the tray from that broken bat. Picking up pieces of bat all over the place. Well, Mitch will step in, hitting at 284. Orland, the team leader, still with those 16 home runs. 51 driven in, that on base percentage at 335, although Mitch of late has not been faring very well. Just a 233 hitter over his last couple of weeks of play. But I think you find that most guys that uh, have pretty good power, pretty much streaky hitters, too. Ebb and flow as the season goes on. And it's tap foul for strike one. Giants going to an overshift with Mitch up there. Crawford, the shortstop, playing about four or five steps to the uh, first base side of second, back at the rim of the outfield grass. Second baseman panicked well out into a shallow right field. Fielder at second, Beltre at first. Two outs here in the bottom of the first. That is a bit low. One and one. Rangers have won three straight. First time they've won three at home in a row since back in the first week of June this year. Last time they won more than three in a row at home. You have to go back to uh, mid-May. So they are doing what they said uh, was important, and that was get the, the play at home in better shape. Rangers play the majority of games at home in the last part of the season. 61 ball games left after tonight. And Jeff Anderson knows that uh, you've got to defend your own turf. Two and one now the count to Moreland. Rangers coming into play this evening. Trailing the uh, Houston Astros by seven games in the American League West. Angels lost today, so the Rangers only four and a half games back of the Angels at the moment. Now the 2-1. Line drive down the right field line. Headed for the corner. Here comes Fielder. He will score. Beltre being waved around. Pitts having trouble getting the ball out of the corner. Beltre scores more with a two-run double. The Rangers jump out in front. Two to nothing. Well, very nice two-out rally. Heston got the strikeout of Rudnick. Nobody on two outs. A couple of harmless singles, and then a well-placed line drive right down the right field line gets stuck in the corner. Both runners are able to score. Looks like it might have been a changeup. Mitch hit a little bit toward the end of the bat, just got it over Belt's head, just kept it fair, and snuck it right into the corner. Couldn't have placed it any better. Well, Mitch Moreland with RBI number 52 and 53. Rangers jump out in front, and here's Josh Hamilton. He waves at the breaking ball from Heston for strike one. Josh hitting 248, four home runs, 14 RBI. Josh took an 0 for 4 last night, but on this homestand, one game against the Giants and the uh, four against the Yankees. Hamilton a 333 hitter. A ball and a strike. Josh in his last 12 ball games. Now, uh, Broken the ball at a 277 clip. And again, the Giants in an overshift with the left handed hitting Hamilton up there. To left center field, Maxwell coming on to make the catch. That'll do it. Rangers, though, do some two out damage. Three consecutive hits, Moreland's two run double. The Rangers are on the board after one, two nothing, Texas.
just use hashtag Southwest Data Strong Fan. And you might just uh, see your photo. Upcoming, uh, one of our upcoming broadcasts. We'll show you tonight's selection a little bit later on. You can uh, tweet yours for a chance to have it shown in one of our ball games. The folks at T-Mobile make all that possible. Well, the Ranger bats have made a 2-0 lead for Cole Hamels possible as he goes to work against Buster Posey here in the top of the second inning. Posey at 324. 14 home runs, 67 RBI. That's 67, the tops on the Giants' ball club. And the pitch just off the plate. Three balls, no strikes. Tom told you about uh, Posey's outings against uh, Cole Hamels. Posey is just completely annihilated. <laughs> Cole Hamels is one of those matchups that has not fared very well. Posey to dead center field. The liner to Shields at the wall leaps up. And yet he kept, yes, he did. He brought it back in. The liner to Shields up against the padding. And Cole Hamels kind <laughs> of a wry smile on his face. Well, nobody knows better than the pitcher, right, Buzz, when a guy's yeah. been having some success against him. So he runs the count to 3-0. and Posey's leading off the inning. I guess you must might assume as a pitcher, okay, it's 3-0 and leading off an inning. He's probably taking a pitch. But Posey's swinging all the way, all the way on the 3-0 pitch, drives it to one of the only parts of the ballpark where that fly ball would have stayed in, <laughs> 404 feet. And all it is is a long out, and that's why Cole had a little bit of grin on his face. The lineup goes back, jumps up, and makes the play. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you have a pretty good understanding of it as a pitcher that and this guy hits me pretty well. You may not know exactly what the numbers are, but you know it's not pretty. There's Delino and Tom taking that page out of your book. Get to the wall get and then go straight up. Yep. You get there and go straight up. You got a good shot. Here's Hunter Pence. Off the end of the bat, a little cue shot that kind of trickles back toward Cole Hamels, who makes the play himself. That's out number two. He had the right to English on that ball as it hit the grass and spun back toward the mound. Two outs, uh, Justin Maxwell coming up. Let's check in with Jim Knox. All right, appreciate it, Buzz. Big night here at the ballpark. Cole Hamels on the mound. You just feel the energy here, and what a night it is for the season ticket holders because you had the season ticket holder picnic today. And what else went on, Michael Wang? We had chalk talks with Jeff Bannister, John Daniels, or uh, Chuck Morgan. A lot of fun there, and then met some players for some autographs. A picnic after that. Just great day overall. Awesome. Got to go down on the field and check out the dugout and everything else. Huh? Take tours of the ballpark. You know, just a great experience for season ticket holders. What a great benefit the Rangers put on for them. And we were just talking just a little while ago. You're just happy to be a season ticket holder because now you feel the energy, right? Absolutely. Just getting Cole Hamels, one ultimate gift for a season ticket holder to bring that guy in for this season and for a couple more after that. There so. you go. All right, Michael, good seeing you. Now enjoy the rest of the game. And still 20, 20, uh, 20 game plans are still available for I understand it. Too, not too late to get, get yourself as a season ticket holder and lock in some playoff tickets. There you go. All right, Michael. Appreciate it. Good seeing you. Buzz? All right, Knox, thank you. Well, Justin Maxwell, who has fared very well against Cole Hamels in the past, but hitting just 215 for the season. And he takes strike one to make it three balls and one strike. Maxwell, seven home runs, 25 driven in. Pretty much a platoon situation for Maxwell and Aoki. We saw last night. It's dribbled foul outside third, and it fills the count out. Maxwell hitting sixth in uh, Bruce Bochy's order for the Giants. Brandon Belt, the first baseman, would follow, and uh, Cole Hamill's going to try his best to make sure that Belt leads off the third inning. The line, the payoff pitch. He can throw the changeup anytime he wants to. Yep. Threw it to, the, to Maxwell on the 3-1 pitch. He was way out in front of it. Threw it again, 3-2, way out in front of it. I don't think he's thrown a curveball yet, has he? Not yet. Evidently, he's got a really good curveball. Yeah. The Giants folks said that that was one pitch he didn't have last time. So the Giants kind of eliminated that from his repertoire. Got him swinging. Three straight changeups. Yep. And Maxwell becomes a second strikeout victim for Cole Hammond. Another one, two, three inning. We played one and a half. Rangers two, Giants nothing.
brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer to kick off the summer right. Ford is the best in Texas. The bottom of the second inning, Rangers on top 2-0. Shinsu Chu will start things off against Chris Heston. Bottom third of the Ranger order. The Rangers sent six men up in the first, and two of them scored. Mitch Moreland, the uh, two-run double to get the Rangers going. Pitch back to Chu is on the inside corner to even things up. Chu at 238. 13 home runs, 48 driven in. A little number that uh, squibbed foul right next to home plate, and it's one and two. Jinsu Chu brings in a three-game hitting streak to play tonight. 500 hitter over those three games since the All-Star break. He's got the highest average on the Ranger Club, a 382 mark. A couple of home runs, 10 runs driven in. Number two, uh, a little over a week ago, hit for the cycle up in uh, Colorado. Well, a great night. Yeah, reasonably uh, cool temperatures, if you can call 93 degrees cool, but there is a, a breeze moving the air around. It's uh, very dry air and Comfortable night out here at the ballpark. Nice crowd filing in. Pretty good walk-up crowd tonight with Cole Hamels, the anticipation of the left-hander firing for the Rangers. Pitch all the way to the backstop. Chu now with a count of two and two. We're talking about uh, Chris Heston, the 27-year-old right-hander for the Giants. He's out of uh, Palm Bay, Florida. Giants uh, drafting him back in uh, 2009 in the 12th round. Up the middle, that's right where the shortstop Crawford is positioned. One gone. Next will be Elvis Andrews. After uh, Heston was taken by the Giants, he spent significant time at each level. Did not progress very quickly. Started out in the rookie league and then went to uh, both levels of A ball each of the next two years. Then to double A and then to triple A in 2013. And that was the year that the Giants said, hey, I, we just don't think you're going to make it. And they designated him for assignment. Middle of uh, July, he cleared waivers. They released him and then he re-signed with the Giants. A lot of times, Buzz, I would think if you're a pitcher or a player and you've been in an organization that long and they pretty much evaluate you that way, for me, it'd be unlikely that I'd want to go back there, yeah. knowing what they thought about me. I agree with you. So they had some pretty good fortune that they were able to re-sign him. Worked there the rest of uh, 2013. Then into 2014, apparently he uh, went on a weight program and uh, agility training and uh, core strengthening program. Put on a lot of muscle, got himself stronger, got himself uh, uh, developed, I guess would be a better thing. And he just, uh, he's become a better pitcher talked about him coming to camp this spring and a couple of people said who in the world's that after watching him pro you, you know what comes to mind is you should take that kid and bring him to the instructional league and let him explain his career and what he did to yeah. the rest of those young pitchers maybe they could do the same thing good point Elvis rips one to left field Maxwell going back it's over his head. one hop and off the out of town scoreboard and boy, Elvis Andrews is lighting it up. That's the fourth ball in the last uh, three nights now that he has just crushed. You know, those, those are balls buzzed in a short period of time that he's hit. And you can go back to the last couple of years, and there's only a handful of times that he hit balls like this. And occasionally he might hit a high changeup or a hanging curveball for a home run right down the left field line, but that's a different swing. Yeah. You know? The only thing you can say right now is you hope it's something that's starting to click in, feel more comfortable, and that you see more often from him than we've seen the first four months of the year. It sure looks that way, at least right now. Sure does. A nice, nice little groove. And again, it's another thing to be in a groove where you're getting your hits, a single to right, a ground ball up the middle, and you're finding holes. He's making his hits. He's hitting them hard. Bobby Wilson up there now. Bobby uh, claimed 
by the Rangers off waivers from the Tampa Bay Rays. Takes outside for ball one. Bobby Wilson with the Rays uh, this year. He was with Arizona last year, briefly. Came up originally with the Angels. Tutored under uh, Mike Socia starting in 2007. Got up to AAA with the Angels and then made his big league debut in the next year. Chopper to third, charged, and picked nicely by Duffy. Two gone. Well, that's one of those balls as a third baseman. You've got to make the decision. Do I stay back, risk a big hop, have to throw on my heels, or do I go after it and get it on the short hop? And Duffy, you'll see his decision, surveys it, and then he comes after it and gets it on a short hop. If he doesn't get there so quickly, it's a tougher hop. And he picks it, throws it across the diamond. Good looking young player. Yes. Rookie batting third. A two away with Elvis still at second base. Now back to the top of the Ranger order. The liner to Shields, who began things for the Rangers by grounding to short, is now at the plate. Elvis diving back in just in case uh, the second baseman panic was coming over to cover. Delano, four out of 11 in his last three ball games. It's a sinking fastball for strike one. The Shields over his last 14 games. That's a good figure for you. A 321 average. He had four doubles and a triple in those 14 games. 0 1 pitch coming from Heston. On the inside corner. Our Ford leaderboard tonight, I'll show you the uh, Rangers franchise record, or franchise history, I guess you would say, for the uh, rookie on base percentage leaders, Rusty Greer. The all time mark at 410. That was back in 1994. The lineup sneaking up that list, or I should say charging up that list. He is at 369 as he bats here in the second inning. A ball and two strikes. Heston okay is the sign from Sanchez. That one's inside. Two and two. That one is right on top yep. of the second pitch, which was called a strike. You see how far inside that pitch was. You know, Bochi can't tell from the dugout whether it's inside or outside, but he knows one before it that looked just like it was called a strike. Fact is, neither one of them were strikes. And to Delano's credit, he, he, he took the second one, knowing the first one was right there too. That is off the on the outside corner. Jeff Kellogg taking a second to make that call, but Delano caught looking. Rangers gone in the second. No runs to hit. One man left after two. Rangers two. Giants nothing.
Get a Rangers cowboy hat. That's courtesy of Coca-Cola and Walmart. You don't want to miss this. That is a good-looking hat. Just get your tickets at TexasRangers.com. You can call 972 Rangers for Tuesday night, cowboy hat night. That's Cole Hamill's night out here at the ballpark here this evening. And uh, so far, so good. Two perfect innings for the newest addition to the Rangers starting rotation. Facing Brandon Belt to start off the third. It'll be Belt, Crawford, and Sanchez. Pretty well hit to center field. Going back to Shields at the track, at the wall, and it is gone. Well, Delino climbed the wall as best he could, got over the top of it, but Belt shot just out of his reach, and he has cut the Ranger lead and happens now 2-1. to one. Yeah, Belt's, Belt's got some power. He only has 10 home runs, but he's got power that would indicate there's more than that kind of production inside of him. And he's got the fastball out over the plate. Knew that ball was hit, hit well. Turned and hoped that it stayed in the ballpark, but it just snuck out. Delano trying to climb that wall, and maybe he watched uh, pictures of Gary Matthews yeah. doing that. The only thing he didn't do is plant his foot in the wall and go up on it. So a two to one Ranger lead. That was the first base runner of the night against Cole Hamels. Brandon Crawford, the swinging strike one. Crawford down to the number eight slot tonight, a 268 average. Here's a curveball. Going up for the ball, and oh, there it is. <laughs> I didn't notice that. The slam first time. dunk. <laughs> Crawford pulling one to right. A long run for Chu. Going back, it's over his head. One bounce off the wall. Into second is Brandon Crawford with a double. Well, Crawford got a curveball that he was way out in front of, but kept his hands back long enough to, even though he lunged for it, he still got the bat on the ball well enough to hit it near the warning track over Chu's head. Jin Su, long way to go. Looked like he was going to get there. Shied away as it got close to the wall. So a home run, now a double. Tying run at second base. Nobody out. Hector Sanchez, the catcher, takes strike one. Sanchez batting at 200 for the year. Limited uh, play, and you can understand that playing behind uh, Buster Posey. Ground ball to the right side. That will get Crawford over to third as Odor throws out Sanchez. One away, but now the tying run just 90 feet away. And here's that ball that Crawford hits to right field. You can see Shinsu gets close to it but made the decision to play it off the wall on a hop. He was playing a little bit toward right center field. Had a long way to go. Just couldn't quite get there. Nice job, by the way, by Sanchez, though. He was definitely trying to yep. go to right field and hit that ball and move the runner. And that forces the Rangers now to pull the infield in with uh, Angel Pagan, the leadoff man up there. One out, Pagan went down swinging on a pitch very similar to that first time up. That uh, good changeup from Cole Hamels. It's nothing and one. An yeah, unusual inning. Both left-handers, Belt and Crawford, have done the damage. Home run and a double. Begon with 25 RBI this year. And he skies one to not very deep right field. We'll see if Crawford tags and tries to score. Here comes a throw from Chu. It's up the line a bit. But Crawford not taking a chance. Well, Cole Hamill's got the equivalent of a pop-up. Either that or a strikeout, which is what you were looking for. And they're two gone. And before Joe Panic comes up, let's take time to send it over to John Radigan for a Mazda game break. All right, John, thank you. Say that the... Uh, that, that trade immediately paid off for Kansas City, huh? 
Rupert to left. Hamilton coming in a hurry. Guys can't make the play. Off his glove into foul territory. Into second is Panic. A looping double down the left field line. And Brandon Crawford stores the tying run. It's a 2-2 ball game now. Well, Josh gave it the all-out effort. Realized he couldn't get it and then lifted his glove to kind of slap the ball down to make sure it wasn't a triple. And pitches away. Panic just kind of slices it out there. I hoped he hit it hard enough to get to Josh, but he didn't. He fell in. All three hits by left hand hitters this inning. Yeah. Still two out. Here's Matt Duffy. And he shoots one up in the middle. That's in the center field of the Around third, coming to the plate is Panic. The throw is cut off. And now they've got Duffy tagged out. There's to him around the bag at second. But the run scored. Giants score three times in the third to take the lead. After two and a half, 3-2, San Francisco. in town and you'll also see that besides the ball game a special post-game fireworks show set to Star Wars music sponsored by Takis. There will also be special appearances by the Star Wars characters out on the concourse. Visit TexasRangers.com You use the coupon code fireworks for $14 upper reserve tickets. The Rangers uh, playing from behind now. 3-2 to two, San Francisco. Rugnet Odor who struck out his first time Goes after the pitch, and it's a high fly ball to right field, but Hunter Pence has room near the corner. That is out number one. That's one of those balls where, as a hitter, you, you say it all the time because it happens all the time. You just missed it. Had a little bit off-speed pitch, hit it off the end of the bat. Had the right trajectory. Just missed the right part of the bat by a couple of inches. So Odor flies out. Now here's Prince Fielder. Prince had a base hit to center field. He, with two outs, got that rally started in the first inning. Heston misses low for ball one. That was Prince's second hit on this homestand. Now, two for four or two for 15. Two balls and no strikes. Buter with that hit now up to 328 with the average. <laughs> Boy, he was going for that one. Yes, he, he was. was. Heston anticipated it too. Threw him a changeup. <laughs> that was one where Prince is going to see how far he could hit that one. He made solid contact. That's up on the roof of center field. <laughs> Goodness. There's that big breaking ball that Heston sneaks in the back door. 
That's just about where Prince was thinking about landing that uh, last pitch. Yep. Upper home run porch out there. Our RF camera giving you some vistas from around the ballpark. Inside, three and two. Now, Prince hitting third in the order will be followed by Adrian Beltre. Chris Heston to the wind, the right-hander deals. Outside and low, ball four. Nice job by Fuder laying off that changeup. Sure was, because you could tell by the way he swung and the way he was looking at those pitches. He wanted to swing. He was he was looking to drive the ball. That was a very patient at bat. Didn't expand the zone. Took the walk. A one-on-one -on -one out for Adrian Beltre. Beltre had a solid base hit to center his first time. Adrian now up over the 260 mark. He's at 261. Heston to the plate. <laughs> Taking that high fastball. <laughs> Doing that little dance that he does at home plate. Mentioned Adrian had that uh, two run home run in the first last night. That was. Just his second home run in the last 37 ball games. Nice to see him drive one, though, the way he did last night. Yep. Get it out of the ballpark. We've sure. seen him hit some line drives that really didn't have the kind of carry on it that we're used to. But I think he's hit a lot of balls, several balls, that if his thumb was healthy, he would have driven out of the ballpark. It's, uh -huh. it's like he just doesn't have the strength in his hand to drive the ball like he's capable of. Pops this one up, foul territory belt near the Ranger dugout. Makes the catch. That's out number two. Well, that one he hit last night, that's a pretty good yeah, carry on it. Definitely. That's a great sign, no doubt. No, Beltre fouls out. Now with two away, Mitch Moreland comes up. Moreland had the two run double in the first inning. Drove in both Fielder and Beltre with a Shot down the right field line into the corner. Mitch now a 287 average as he faces Heston. Heston will have two or three different speeds of breaking ball. That's the slower one, the you know, 72 to 74. Then he'll add a little bit to it, make it a, a normal speed curveball up around 78 or 80. I'm going to throw one a little bit harder. It's uh, more along the lines of a slider. Pretty good tailing fastball. We'll take you back to the first. Mitch getting that off-speed pitch. Going to get down into the corner to get both Prince Fielder and Adrian Beltre home. Pops one up to shallow center. Long run in. Maxwell coming full speed dive and makes the catch. Boy, Justin Maxwell covered an awful lot of ground. Made a great diving catch. The Rangers are gone in the third. One man left. On to the fourth we go. 3-2 Giants.
Well, Cole Hamels back out to the hill as we head to the top of the fourth inning. Buster Posey, Hunter Pence, and Justin Maxwell. And the first pitch is low for ball one. And joining us, as always, here for the middle two innings, Mark McElmore. Good to see you, Mac. Good to see you guys. Uh, the uh, excitement palpable in this ballpark with Cole Hamels going out there. Very much so. Buster Posey, who hits him like a stepson. He pulled that one foul. Tom had a had a stat about Buster Posey being no, he was over 500 lately against Cole Hamels. Wow, career-wise, he's over 420. Amazing how some of those matchups just occur, I, and that's not taken any way from Buster Posey. He's one of the better hitting you know, hitters in uh, in all of baseball. But Cole Hamels one of the better pitchers in all of baseball too. Sometimes you just can't explain it. You mm -hmm. just have no reason why. I mean, he gets a 3 0 pitch, good fastball down in the zone, typically, which is where pitchers want to be. And that ball's almost out of the ball. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing about Buster Paul is he doesn't care where he's hitting, he just likes to hit. 324, both home and away. I'm not really sure if that's good or not. <laughs> Man. I mean, that's something you don't see. And I. Man, who's the last catcher we've seen that way. I think it's our guy. Yeah. It was an offensive threat and a defensive threat. Right, from a 3-2 changeup. He's still got the bat on it. He sticks his bat out there. It's going to find a hole someplace. And Posey a leadoff single. That'll bring up Hunter Pence. Let's take a look at tonight's Coors Light cold hard fact for you. Cole Hamill's just the second player in Major League history to throw a no-hitter and then be traded before his next start. The other one, Captain Hook. Burt Blylevin threw a no-hitter for these Rangers in his last start of 1977. And the Rangers then traded him the next year to Pittsburgh. And the Rangers behind Paul Hamill's turn to two. 4-6-3, that erases Posey. Hunter Pence grounds into the twin killer. The Rangers are turning double plays like they're on a mission. It doesn't matter whether they're easy double plays or hard double plays. Odor and Elvis are coming across the bag hard, firing the ball as hard as they can, coming down low. Nice double play. We've but seen I, I, that every time you've been up here, this homestand. Yeah, yeah but that's low say, bridging them. Here's the best part about it. You see Cole getting yep. ready to reach for it, and yep. he, he realizes, hey, my second baseman's right there, and he let it go. Now, a younger pitcher is probably right, doing point. everything he can to try and that. stop that ball. Yeah, yeah exactly. The younger pitcher's falling all over himself yeah. trying to get that ball. Yeah. <laughs> that's when you deflect it toward right, right field exactly. and ends up second yep. and third. Nobody out. Maxwell, a little cue shot down the pitch. And it turns into a very quick and easy one, two, three inning for Cole Hamels and company, despite the base hit. Three and a half in the books. It's the Giants three, the Rangers two on Fox Sports Southwest.
7,500 kids, 1,300 for the backpack for back to school, obviously. Come on out to Gold Y Park, watch the Rangers take on the Mariners, and get your kids geared up for school. Tickets are available at TexasRangers.com. A 3-2 Giants lead as the Rangers come to bat here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And Josh Hamilton takes the pitch just a little bit low from Chris Hester. Hamilton, a fly ball to left field his first time up. That was back in the first inning. That's when the Rangers scored their two runs of the game. And the next pitch low and outside, 2 and nothing. Josh, a 245 average as he faces Heston. 2 0, usually a pretty good count for him if he gets a fastball. He kind of turned that bat loose that time. He was going after it with a vengeance. Yeah, I like to see that from Josh. Uh, he's getting an awful lot of off speed pitches mm -hmm. and has been, uh, you know, the short amount of time that he's been back. Belt. Well, underhand to Heston Covery, one gone. Next will be Shinsu Chu. Chu, a ground ball to short, his first time to the plate. And seed uh, Shinsu in the lineup the last couple of nights. Left handers started. So Jeff Bannister had both Chu and Moreland out of the lineup with the left handers uh, going against the Rangers. But they're both back in there tonight. One ball, no strikes. Chu at 237 with the average. He has uh, been turning it on for the Rangers the last couple of weeks. We mentioned the post All Star game average at 382. He's also gone 5 for 14 on the homestand. It's 357. 1 1 pitch from Heston. Two balls and a strike. Chris Heston uh, getting ready to throw his 65th pitch of the night. Here with one out in the fourth inning. Rangers uh, made him work a bit in the first inning. And that is low. Three and one. So Chu trying to get aboard with one out. He'll be followed by Elvis Andrews. Sanchez says, why don't we try that changeup on three and one? Missed with it outside. The one out walk, second walk issued by Chris Heston. That brings up Elvis. Hard hitting Elvis. Well, he did it again, didn't he? Another rocket. Yeah. You know, to me, he just looks like he's nice and relaxed nice and calm he gets that leg kick up now and it's just nice and smooth he's not rushing not trying to you know jam that front foot down and get there in a hurry he's just getting there nice and easy takes that first pitch from Heston in for strike one well, last night after the double after the home run Bumgarner Served him up a pretty good assortment of off-speed pitches, slow pitches. So Heston does the same thing. He ripped a fastball. First pitch was a changeup. Well, there's the breaking ball that's just a little bit low. Well, we talked to you in, in the pregame about uh, Elvis since the All-Star break. These are updated numbers for you after that double his first time up. 328 average with five doubles for the Rangers, and uh, he has hit more line drives maybe in the last four or five days than we've seen him hit in maybe a month. No question about that. He's been right on it. I mean, he's squaring it up and driving it. A couple of them over the left fielder's yeah. head, almost one over the center fielder's head uh, Thursday night. Two balls and a strike now as Heston misses high. Well, their outfield right now is playing him deeper than any outfield that I've seen. Usually the right fielder's 10 feet more shallow than that. 
The way he's hit the ball over the left fielder's head, he's probably moved back a little bit too. <laughs> yes, he has. <laughs> the guy out in center, he's back a little bit. Yeah. He typically plays a shallow center field. But being able to drive the ball like that, that opens up the field for those soft line drives to fall in. They can't take those little base hits away from you quite as easily. Two balls and a strike. Elvis waiting. Chew with a pretty good lead. Chew on the move. The hit and runs on. Up the middle. Beats it. Chew will continue around to third. Boy, Elvis almost decapitated Heston. Andrews two for two. Well, he tried to throw him the off-speed pitches. He did early in the count, but he got behind in the count. Had to come in with a fastball, and Elvis hit that ball hard up the middle. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> that was so close, he cleaned out his earwax. <laughs> No, oh, runners at the corners now with one out. Bobby Wilson trying to at least uh, get the Rangers into a tie as the tying run at third and the go ahead run at first. Wilson, a ground ball to third his first time. And there's something the Rangers uh, apparently imparted to uh, Wilson. They be aware now of first and third. Nothing wrong with a, uh, with a safety squeeze if you can get the butt down. The Rangers have been employing that uh, that tack quite a bit this year. Yeah, you just got to be careful with the first baseman, you know, holding the runner on the base because he can come in and make that play and take it home. Mm -hmm. That's probably going to be his best bet if that if Wilson bunts it too hard towards first base. Whoa, Pick a little pickoff attempt at third. Don't see that one too. Pretty often. good idea. You had that move, Buzz. Yeah. Had to. I had a lot of guys on base. <laughs> I can't remember if I've seen a guy picked off third by a pitcher before. Probably have. But you Black see Jack it very Mc often. Blackjack McDowell did that a couple of times I saw, yeah. Shot foul at home plate, one and one. The, uh, there, there's a an inhibition against throwing the ball down the left field line with guys on base. <laughs> you do it one time and managers are a little little leery of you doing it yeah, again. You th throw it by first, the guy goes yeah. to second. You yeah. throw it by third, he goes home. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think of that. You have to kind of sell that idea to the managers. One ball and one strike. Off the outside corner, it's two and one. The Rangers eyeballing Heston pretty well. Got in good hitters counts in this inning. Chu drew the one out walk. Elvis Andrews the hit and run base hit. Puts runners at the corners. Rangers trying to uh, catch the Giants. Chu down there at third talking to Tony Beasley, the third base coach. Elvis getting that lead at first. Three and one. Bobby Wilson doing a good job of uh, not expanding his strike zone. Wilson batting ninth in the order. The liner to Shields in the top. Waiting in the on-deck circle. Chris Heston maybe starting to feel it here in this 92-degree evening. 74th pitch of the night on the way. Base hit to left field. That'll score two. Elvis stops at second. Bobby Wilson his first Ranger base hit produces a tying run here tonight. It is 3-3. Three, three. Well, what a great feeling for Bobby Wilson to join the team behind the plate. Going a little bit more as a defensive player, probably. And he had, comes up there. First game as a Ranger. Has a chance to do some damage with a man in scoring position. And this is what he does. Rips that ball in the left field. Bobby Wilson with his fifth RBI overall this year and four of them with the Tampa Bay Rays and says, yeah that does have to be a good feeling come into the clubhouse introduce yourself to everybody and go out and drive in a run on your second at bat 
No, Dave Rigetti, the uh, Giants pitching coach, out to slow things down a little bit, give the uh, Giants bullpen an opportunity to begin to loosen behind Chris Heston. Runners now at first and second, a run across, still just one out. The liner to Shields, a ground ball to short, and a strikeout. 0 for 2 tonight. Usually when Delano has had an 0 for 2 or maybe 3, that butt possibility sneaks into his consciousness. Probably never far away from it, but uh, if he hasn't gotten a hit, he'll, uh, he'll think about that even harder. First pitch is wide. Going to third is Elvis. A great anticipation. And he is in ahead of the tag. A nice job by Elvis. Very good read. It, you know, this is something that you have to work on. You, you either have the instincts to do it, but you still have to work on it. And Elvis got a great jump. Saw that ball going down into the dirt. Saw the big little roll there. And initially... It looked like Sanchez was going to get to it and that uh, Elvis was going to be out. But yeah, that ball didn't get that didn't, far away from No, him. it didn't. I was a little nervous, actually. <laughs> yes, anytime a ball stays on the dirt, that's, that's a little bit too close to home, I would think. Yeah, I thought it was going to kick and roll a little bit more. But a good job by Elvis to get himself in the third. And the butt bunted through by uh, Delino. That's what you're talking about, Mac. If, if that's a safety squeeze with the first baseman in, you got to lay. What do you have to do? Get it through the pitcher and him. Otherwise, he's, he's got to throw bunt, it home. He's got to bunt that ball to second base. There's no way that it, it makes it difficult. I'll say this: it makes it difficult to to drop a perfect bunt in between first and home, knowing that the first baseman coming in and a first baseman like Brandon Bell, who can field his position very well, knows exactly what to do with it. One ball, one strike. Throw down to third, they've got Elvis picked up. Elvis getting that secondary lead in anticipation of Delano getting the bunt down, and he strayed too far. And Hector Sanchez picked him clean. Elvis not too happy with Duffy. Duffy looks like he dropped his knee down and blocked Elvis from the bag, but that's exactly what you're supposed to do. He put that foot right there in front yeah. of it. So two outs now. Bobby Wilson at first base. Two balls and a strike to Delano to Shields. Heston from the belt. Two and two. In that situation, runners at first and third and one out with uh, the Shields speed, you've got to swing the bat unless there's a squeeze on it. If it's a squeeze, then okay. But, you know, a safety squeeze, this is what got Elvis hung up. Yeah, because exactly. Elvis sees Belt over there at first base charging. He knows he's got to get that little extra lead. So with the shield speed, there, there's no reason to bunt unless Banny puts on, on a squeeze. Fly ball, left center field, up into the twilight. Justin Maxwell there, and that'll do it. Rangers do come back to tie the ball game. They get a run on two hits and leave one. We have finished four at Globe Wyatt Park in Arlington. The Rangers three and the Giants three.
they make, you'll see why driving matters. Another brand new ball game. We are deadlocked at three as the Giants come to bat here in the top of the fifth inning. Bottom third of the San Francisco order to face Cole Hamels. Brandon Belt, Brandon Crawford, and Hector Sanchez. It was Brandon Belt who got the uh, Giants on the board his first time up with a home run to dead center. For Belt, his 11th home run of the year. He has now driven in 44. Batting average of 276. Didn't really want to and couldn't help himself. Gotta love Cole Hamels the way he gets that ball and he's right back up, ready to go to work and a good idea of what he wants to do. Of course, I guess he's playing the same team the way that Hamels did with uh, Cliff Lee and Roy Holiday that uh, you pick up some of those things. Like, let's go. <laughs> you know, it amazes me that, you know, you don't see a lot more younger guys following these guys, their lead. Right. I mean, if you look at most of the pitchers that are, you know, the elite pitchers throughout the league, what do they all do? They work quickly. Yep. They get the ball, they get up there, they have their game plan, they know what they want to throw. They're not up there shaking off two and three times and stepping off and coming back. And Rugged, the handles got it. What a wow. play. Great job by Moreland to knock it down in the first place. Greater job by Odor to react to the ball and get Hamels at the back. Well, even better job at Hamels continuing to go over yeah. there to first base. And he can work that glove because Odor threw him a, a rocket <laughs> at point blank range. A too. Rock, and down low, too. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't chest high either. See, yeah, I, I, I got a feeling there's not many left hand pitchers that would have been covering first on that play. Nice play. None of that happens if Mitch doesn't get a glove on it. Another good at bat for Belt. Sure was. Brush back and hit a rope. No, one very important out now, Brandon Crawford. Crawford uh, doubled the right his first time. Mitch staying down, he can stay out of the line of fire. <laughs> Might get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly hit by the mound. Odor. A little underhand flip. Crawford retired to gone. And before Hector Sanchez comes up, we're going to check in with Jim Knox. All right, appreciate it, Buzz. Before the game, the Fox Sports Fan Express rolling in from the great city of Oklahoma. That's right, Oklahoma City on hand tonight, but courtesy of the franchise, the radio station, Kobe Daniels. You guys, uh, you're the afternoon host, but what a night you could have picked, huh? Yeah, Cole Daniels on the mound. You got a full house here. We find out Cole Hamels is pitching, and that obviously made it much better. But uh, we brought a lot of OU and OSU fans from our great listenership in Oklahoma City. And the one thing that can absolutely unite everybody is the Texas Rangers. There we go. Well, good to have you guys out here. Appreciate it. We just need to get that Giants cap out of here. We'll be good. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> Adrian Beltre to his left. Picks it off. Sets and throws. And that'll do it. That's a pretty fancy defense in the inning. It's a 1-2-3 frame for Cole Hamill. We finished half the ball game. Rangers and Giants still tied at three.
out here at the ballpark. We'll be treated to a medical center Arlington, Adrian Beltre bobblehead. Join the uh, Rangers out here at the park as they take on the Rays and get your collectible bobblehead. Just visit TexasRangers.com or you can call 972 Rangers for tickets. Rugden Odor leading things off for the Rangers here in the bottom of the fifth inning. A 3-3 ball game. Odor taking strike one. He is 0 for 2 tonight. He was uh, struck out and fly to right field. Rangers three runs on six hits. The Giants three runs on five hits. Out of play to the left. Nothing and two. Rugged at a 262 average as he faces Chris Heston. Heston trying to rebound from a difficult inning in the fourth. He got himself in trouble by issuing a walk and getting behind a couple of hitters. He just came back to tie the ball game. A walk to Chew, a hit and run single for Elvis. Then Bobby Wilson, an RBI base hit. Odor pointing at something out there. Apparently a ball or something got loose in the warning track. We're going to have to go out there and. Rubnet's planning on hitting the ball to the wall in center field. Didn't want the guy to step on it out there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he was he might he hit what five in July? Yeah, he just might Should have left it there for Could have stepped on it when he tries to jump up against the wall to take this home run back Didn't quite get it up in Not the air quite. Granted belt to the bag and that is out number one well, Before Prince Fielder steps in let's send it over to John Radigan for a monster game break Thank you, John. I think uh, Clayton Kershaw and Zach Greinke are trying to outdo each other. Scoreless innings. Or scoreless outings, I should say. In the AL West, Eagles now two and a half games behind Houston. Rangers just four and a half behind the Angels. So that uh, is tightening up a bit in the West. Fastball to the inside corner to Prince. That makes it one and one. Can you guys remember two pitchers having streaks like that in the same season? No, you know, I was trying to think back, Mac, to when uh, uh, Randy Johnson and uh, Kurt Schilling were both with the Diamondbacks, 2000, 2001. It seems like they had a streak like that for strikeouts, and I, and I can't recall what it was. But that would be the last one to, that comes to mind that uh, where they had two guys who were just dominant at the same time. I mean, that's 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 scary. Yeah. You're an opposing team coming in. I mean, yes, anybody can, be, you know, get beat any given day, but you've got two guys doing that. I'll tell you, when it really gets scary, you look at the National League West, the Dodgers now with a two game lead over the Giants. You go into postseason, and in a short series, you get to face Kershaw and, and Granke, and then maybe Kershaw again after a day off. Wow. You know, that, that's ridiculous. And they can throw, you know, they beat themselves up now with the. Uh, Getting Latos and, and uh, Alex Wood. So, mm, the rich get richer, I, I guess, as they say. <laughs> Three and two to Prince. Payoff pitch. Shot the other way. That's a fair ball <laughs> down the line. <laughs> Over to cut it off is Maxwell. Fielder cruising into second with an opposite field double. And Prince, another multi hit game. That is the 41st. Multiple hit game of the year and his 21st double. That's the good thing about the shift for a left hand hitter. If you can just shoot it right down the line, that's a double. I love this. You look at it, you look at it when he hits it, he's like, Is that going to go? Uh, uh, y yes, it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no doubt that he's trying to do that with that pitch. He's just slapping it that way. And he found the fair, found the foul line, kept it fair. Uh, he, he's loving this. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! So Prince Fielder, two for two tonight with a walk. Also, he's in scoring position for Adrian Beltre. Beltre, one out of two. 
Singleton scored in the first. Takes that pitch wide. Two balls, no strikes. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking to it, wasn't he? That's almost Carlton Fisk like right there. <laughs> There's your multiple hit game leaders. Three more now than uh, former Ranger Ian Kinsler. Kipnis also with 38. Two balls, no strikes to Beltre. Popped it up. Oh, he had a rip at that thing. Duffy coming down the line from third and makes the catch just in fair territory for out number two. I think A.B. wants that one back. Wasn't that about the same spot as the Buck Runner pitch last night that he hit out? It sure looked like Up it. a little bit. Oh, oh not, not quite. A little bit more break to it. Now Bruce Bochy out to the mound, and that's going to do it for Chris Heston. So Heston, after 92 pitches... On a warm evening here, we'll uh, depart in the fifth inning with one on and two out. Pitching change underway at Globe Live Park. We'll take a timeout. We're back right after this on Fox Sports Southwest. and Rangers all nodded up at three and home momentum has been a tough thing to come by for the Rangers this season but they've got some right now and Jeff Bannister says they want to hold on to it as long as they can. Saw it too also last night when uh, when we had to deal with uh, you know Bumgarner taking offense to a couple of things and you know how our guys responded as far as how they're going to stand up for each other and what they believe in and and uh, so just the culmination of all of it and, and, and really it is it's tough to quantify but and fragile to hold on to uh, you just ride the wave while you got it but you can definitely feel it when you've got it and the Rangers have had it for the last three games and looking to continue it here tonight guys all right Emily thank you uh, Jeremy Offeld has come in out of the Giants bullpen to face Mitch Borland and Offeld drops in strike one so I felt last night worked at inning and a couple of strikeouts giving up a hit. Giants bullpen, as that number would tell you, 067 bullpen ERA since the All-Star break. That's the lowest in Major League Baseball. And I felt a big part of that bullpen, a middle reliever, if you will. Facing Mitch Moreland. Mitch, one out of two tonight. A two-run double in the first inning. Prince Fielder out at second, right there at the bottom of your screen, stepping off his lead. I thought going to get to Santiago. There are the numbers on the 36-year-old left-hander. 37th game of the year. Opponents hitting 317 against him. He has not been um, a lights-out kind of reliever, but very serviceable, especially from that left side against left-handers.
No balls and a strike. A check of second. And Mitch grounds it weakly to the right side. Alfield covering gets the throw in time from Belt. And that'll do it. Well, the Rangers get a double from Fielder, but strand him. And we have finished five. It's a 3-3 ball game. Mac, thanks for joining us. We'll see you after the ball game on Rangers Live. Ranger games. You save nearly 50% on four tickets, four jumbo hot dogs, four Coke soft drinks, two Kids Zones wristbands, and one souvenir program. Visit TexasRangers.com slash specials to get your Coca-Cola family packs for the last four games of this homestand. Cole Hamels to work here in the top of the sixth inning. He's facing the top of the uh, Giants lineup. Angel Pagan, Joe Panic, and Matt Duffy. Pagan has flied to right and struck out. Taking, uh, as he showed a bunt, he took the pitch low. Hamels just about ready to cross the 60-pitch plateau. So, as usual, very economical. Threw 129 pitches in his uh, no-hitter last Saturday against the Cubs. Three and zero now. The count to Pagan leading off this sixth. Three and one. Well, we mentioned about Pagan last night, Buzz. How many at bats was it without a home run? Yeah, six, 600. 50, 650 something, yeah. Hasn't hit a home run. Maybe a little bit of a slump right now. Three for 26. Three and two. 655 coming into play. Now 657 with the two at bats tonight. And just about ready to beat 658. But a good on base guy at the top of the order with very good speed for the Giants. Now the payoff pitch to him. Got him swinging. <laughs> good back changeup. Yeah. Good back 3 0 and 3 and 1 and threw him fastballs to get back in the count. And if you're the hitter, if you're Pagan, you just have to assume you're getting a fastball again. He's saying he can't walk me. Well, he didn't. You swung at a pitch in the dirt. Good changeup. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be hard to lay off that pitch. But, and, and Cole Hamels is, is such a tall, long-armed guy out there. I would imagine it, it looks very much like the fastball. You can't tell the difference in arm speed. Yeah, I, I, I think the same thing watching the swings at it. Joe Panic had a uh, double his last time up, drove in a run, and scored a run. And now 35 RBI for the year, and hitting at 309. 2 0 pitch, popped him up. 
near the mound. Adrian Beltre coming down, taking charge of this pop-up. Two gone. Well, Cole's given up five hits in the game. Unfortunately, four of them came in the third inning. Cruised in every inning except that inning. Strung together a couple of hits to start it off and a couple of hits at the end. Yeah, nice yeah. pitch totals. Even the second inning. Yeah. The third, third inning. Matt Duffy has a single and an RBI in two trips. Take strike one. Duffy, the rookie third baseman. He's uh, leading in most rookie categories, offensive categories in the National League. He takes strike two. He's also hitting 377 in his last 16 ball games. But down in the count to Hamels, no balls, two strikes. Duffy now with at least one hit in each of his last three ball games. Hamels back to the plate. Just missed down and in. The Fox tracker said he didn't. However, Buzz, well, I got a second. I want to have another shout out to our good friend Jackie Brown. Jackie's back home after surgery, resting up for more surgery. Brownie, I know you're listening. We're all thinking about you. Got a lot of friends here with the Rangers. And there's a strikeout for you right there. There you go. You would have done it with a curveball. He did it with a changeup. <laughs> Three up, three down with a couple of strikeouts. Giants gone in the sixth. After five and a half, we are still tied at three. By Sonic. Tonight's jackpot is worth $900 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive In. If a Ranger hits a home run during this inning, Henry A. Miller from Dallas will win $900. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam this inning, Henry is going to take home $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. Josh Hamilton leading off against Jeremy Appelt. He looks at strike one from the left hander. Hamilton tonight has flagged to left and grounded to first. Both those appearances against the starter, Chris Heston. Heston worked the first four and two-thirds, seven hits, three runs. They were all earned, two walks, two strikeouts. We will have no decision tonight. Hamilton, big swing and a miss of that slow breaking ball from Affel. Right when that last strikeout, I was in the middle of a little shout-out to our good friend Jackie Brown. Mm -hmm. and 
Brownie, I, I know you're listening. I want you to know how many people from around the Metroplex, not just players, but there's a lot of players around here, have called after hearing me mention your recovery and wanting to know that they're thinking about you, Don Stanhouse, Rich Billing, so many others. So rest up. I know you've got another surgery coming down the road, but you've got a whole bunch of friends here in Texas, and they're all thinking about you. Hamilton grounding out to start the Rangers sixth inning. Now Shinsu Chu. Chu has had a ground out and a walk. He walked uh, with one out in the fourth inning and came around to score. The uh, tying run. And Bobby Wilson drove him home. Off else, uh, staring in for the sign. Now is ready to work to Chu. One ball, no strikes. Offeld, who originally came to the big leagues with the Kansas City Royals many moons ago. Shoots one down the line of extra bases for Chu. It's into the corner. Maxwell digs it out, and Chu standing at second with a one-out double. A nice piece of hitting there by Chu. I've seen Chu do that a number of times this year. It wasn't an enormous shift, but there was still more room on the left side than there was on the right side. And against the left hand pitcher, it's kind of taking what they give you. It's a pitch out over the plate, drives it the other way. Didn't just dribble it toward left field, he went that way and hit it solidly. And with a couple of uh, right handed hitters coming up. Chu has literally knocked out Jeremy Appelt. Appelt uh, is gone as uh, Bruce Bochy signals the bullpen. So another pitching change underway here at Globe Live Park. Rangers have the go-ahead run at second, one out in the sixth inning. We're back right after this. Brought to you by the Texas Department of Transportation. Well, George Contos, 30-year-old right-hander, has taken uh, over the mound chores for the San Francisco Giants. He'll face Elvis Andrews with the go-ahead run out at second. The first of Shinsu Chu. Contos, 48 appearances now, and very fine ERA of 146. The league hitting less than 200, 196 against it. Contos, uh, an Illinois product, goes 6'3", about 215 pounds. And he is facing one of the hotter Ranger hitters. That would be Elvis Andrews, who is two for two tonight. Elvis, a single and a double this evening. Contos to the plate. One ball, no strikes. Contos, uh, a lot of cutters. Sliders and 
occasional sink. Uh, everything relatively hard from Contos. Originally a product of the uh, New York Yankee system. Came over to the Giants in a trade back in 2012. Right-hander out of Northwestern University. 1-0 pitch. Two balls, no strikes. Elvis with the average now almost to 270, 269 as he faces Contos. See Shinsu Chu out there at second, getting his lead. He's carrying the go-ahead run here in the Rangers' sixth inning. Rangers, yeah, we talked about it earlier in the year. They had, they had their struggles with runners in scoring position. Not so much lately. 294. In the last 11 ball games, they've been able to uh, get the little things done too, advancing runners. Off speed, that catches the outside corner. Two balls and a strike. Elvis digging back in there. Elvis has had one other at bat against Contos, and he went down swinging. 2-1 pitch. Three balls and a strike. Sanchez able to keep that ball in the dirt close enough to home to prevent Chu from advancing. Elvis now on a good hitter's count. Last 10 ball games, Elvis, as we mentioned, one of the hottest Ranger hitters at 349. And just as importantly, eight runs driven in in those 10 ball games. Contos has been in 47 games, thrown 49 innings, only walked six batters. Showing some pretty good respect to Elvis right here, though, and how hot he's been. A lot of off speed pitches behind in the count. Going out of his way not to give Elvis a good pitch to hit. He's set for the 3 1. Three and two. Good pitch. That fastball looked like looked like a cut fastball. Well located with it. And a five to one strikeout to walk ratio. So the count has gone full. He does have first base open. You've got a right-handed hitting Bobby Wilson waiting in that on deck circle. And we'll see if that dictates uh, something other than a fastball to Elvis. Sanchez going through the series of signs. And Contos agrees with one. Payoff pitch on the way. Lost him. Elvis able to lean on it, and he takes the walk. Runners at first and second with one out for Bobby Wilson. Sanchez chatting briefly with Contos. Wilson drove in his first run in his second at bat for the Rangers. And a base hit to left in the fourth, and that tied the ball game at that time. He drove home Shinsu Chu. He has had a second base now. Elvis at first. Now Bobby Wilson, who was claimed off the waiver wire by the Rangers yesterday from Tampa Bay, hit just 145 for the Rays this year. Take strike one. Wilson opened the season with the Rays. Was designated for assignment second week in June. Outrighted to uh, AAA. He came back to uh, the Rays the end of July before going on the, uh, the waivers. 0-1 pitch.
back in the fourth inning. And that was against Chris Heston. He's, uh, Bobby Wilson drove in the tying run with that solid base hit to left field. Trying to do something similar here. Jew getting his lead from second as Canto sets. Popped up behind home plate. That's going to go back into the seats. And we will try it again. I mentioned Bobby Wilson. Originally signed and developed by the uh, Angels. Made his major league debut in 2008. Most games he played in in Anaheim was 75. That was in 2012. He went over and played uh, just a couple of games with the Diamondbacks last year before going on down to Tampa Bay. Awaiting another 0 2 pitch. Shallow center going out. Panic again. Get it. Around third comes June. He will score. And Bobby Wilson has put the Rangers on top with his second RBI single of the night. It is 4 to 3 Texas. How about that? First game as a Ranger. He's got two RBI hits. First base was open. There's no doubt that Contos was pitching around Elvis. Elvis has been hot. Doesn't care if he walks him. Wants to set up a possible double play. The fact that Elvis has been hot probably led them to pitch him that way. He took the walk. Nice job by Elvis. And then Bobby's up there battling. Just makes a little bit of contact. Loops it over the second baseman's head for his second RBI hit. Chu was halfway to third. Said I might as well keep on going, which he did. He scores easily. Now Elvis is at third. Chance to pick up another one right here. Well, Bobby Wilson, what a heck of a, uh, a debut here in Arlington. Catching for Cole Hamels and two RBI singles. The out of the shield takes inside for ball one. So Bobby Wilson tying the ball game with a single in the fourth, putting the Rangers on top with a single here in the sixth. Rangers looking for more. Delino tonight 0 for 3. Well, this is the same combination we had back in the fourth inning. Right. Delino up, less than two outs, and Elvis on third. Let's not go with the, with the uh, safety squeeze right here. I don't blame Bobby for being happy. That feels good. Join a new team. Make that kind of contribution in your first game. Look how happy the guys on the bench are. Two and zero to the Shields. Now three and zero. Oh. Working himself into a deeper hole. He's already given up the go-ahead run. He's got runners at first and third. Still just one out. Elvis over there at third, Wilson at first. The liner to Shields, the leadoff man for the Rangers, to be followed by Rugnet Odor. 3 0 pitch. Had the green light driven to right field. That'll be deep enough to score Elvis, who's tagging. Pinch with the throw to the plate. It is cut off. Elvis scores. The line on the shields, a sacrifice fly on a 3-0 pitch, and the Rangers lead it 5-3. Are you trying to figure this game out? Two innings ago, the line is up there, first and third and one out, and tries to squeeze, safety squeeze twice to the point where Elvis knows he has to get a jump if he's going to score on it. Ends up on a pitch outside getting picked off. Next time up. After two two thoughts of a safety squeeze, he's swinging on a 3-0 and pitch and drives a sacrifice fly to right field. Go figure that one out. But I, I know Mac felt the same way. In that situation, first and third, you're a leadoff hitter. You're swinging the bat good. He's hitting around 290 for 50 or 55 games. Yep. Swing the bat, drive the run in. Well, that's just exactly what he did and that so, time. And so he did. Now here's Rugnet. Off speed and low for ball one. Well, the Rangers taking the lead with two here in the sixth, looking for more. 
Rangers now five runs on nine hits. You know, Buzz, if you're ever going to get a fastball to hit, that was the time. 3-0, yeah. and oh, got a guy that's walked six guys all year long. He's not going to walk you. He can't try to trick you. He, he doesn't want to walk you with Odor coming up next. You know you're going to get a good fastball to hit. You've seen a bunch of pitches already. That's a great, great call swinging at the 3-0 pitch right there. Delano DeShields driving in his 19th run of the year with that sacrifice fly. Odor looking for more damage. And a check swing roller foul. One ball and two strikes. Rugnet, a strikeout in the first, a fly ball to right in the third, and a ground ball in the fifth. First run of the inning. Shinsu Chu coming home on uh, Bobby Wilson's base hit. Jeremy Affeld had that go on his legend. And this last run has gone to George Contos. Rugnet, a 261 average. Talking about Rugged coming back to the big leagues. He was summoned from Round Rock on the 15th of June, and since then, he has hit 349. There goes Wilson. The pitch is grounded up the middle. As he played, though, for Joe Panic, and that'll do it. But the Rangers take the lead. They get two runs on two hits and a walk and leave a man. After six, it's now the Rangers five, the Giants three. Hamill making his Ranger debut tonight struck out the first giant that he faced and then got uh, a great defensive play to end the first inning one two three five Hamill's though would give up uh, some runs in the third inning as uh, Brandon Belt with the first base hit off in the left of the ballpark he'd give up two more runs and that made it a three two Giants lead but his Ranger teammates have come back and Hamels has settled down has worked six innings and back out now to start the seventh with a five to three lead. Buster Posey leading things off. Posey is one for two against Hamels tonight. In the air to left field, hit pretty well. Going back is Hamilton. He's at the wall. That ball's gone. It's unbelievable. It doesn't matter what he throws, Posey. Posey's going to have a good swing at it. Just barely got that one over the fence. Just barely missed a home run. It has a line drive hit. Came into the game 11 for 21 against Cole. 
Johnson didn't think he hit that ball that well. Yeah, I don't think he did. Yeah, I didn't think he did either. But well enough to get it over the out of town scoreboard. A second home run of the night by the Giants against Hamels. It's now a five to four Ranger lead. He hits it toward the end of the bat. He's hoping it was hit well enough, yeah. and his hope came true. One one pitch to Hunter Pence, and it's knee high on the outside corner. Pence 0 for 2 tonight. He's grounded out twice, once into a double play. Bowen inside. And the count is two and two. Nicole Hamels this year allowed a total of 12 home runs before tonight. Two more on the ledger tonight. And he gets Pence for the strikeout. Cole picking up his fifth strikeout of the evening. One gone. Let's go down and check in with Emily Jones. Well, Buzz and Tom, if you're curious about the uh, Hamels effect as far as ticket sales are concerned, since the trade was announced and it was known that Hamels was going to start tonight, the Rangers sold 8,500 tickets, so uh, a pretty positive effect on those ticket sales early on. I would say so. Justin Maxwell fouls it out of play. I know when I got here this afternoon in the ballpark, there were pretty good lines out mm -hmm. outside. Folks uh, with obvious interest in uh, the debut of Cole Hamilton. The Rangers go on and win this ball game and make it a four-game winning streak. I think the interest will carry right on over. The left field, that's a base hit in front of Hamilton. Maxwell has his first hit of the night. A one-out single puts him on for Brandon Belt. First baseman, Brandon Belt. Seven hits off of Cole Hamels by the Giants this evening. One out in the top of the seventh inning. Rangers leading 5-4. And Brandon Belt to the plate. Belt had the uh, first hit of the night, as you saw in our Ford game summary. The home run to dead center field. Hamels had retired the uh, first six Giants that he faced. Last time up, Belt hit a rocket that... Uh, Mitch Moreland was able to get a glove on him, carry him over to Rugnet Odor, who threw on to Hamill's covering. That's had good swings tonight from the left side. One ball, one strike. Cole just passing the 80 pitch mark. Next one will be 83 this evening. That's out of play to the left. One and two. Next to that game that uh, the Giants had against Cole Hamels back on July the 10th in San Francisco, a 15 to 2 drubbing of the uh, Phillies. Hamels gave up one home run in that ball game. Runner on the move from first. The throw is not in time. And it caroms away from Elvis, but backed up by Odor. Well, Maxwell able to swipe second. And now the uh, Giants have the tying run in scoring position. but still just one out. And Maxwell got a pretty good jump. Bobby Wilson didn't have a real good chance to get him. Maybe with a perfect throw, if he could have dropped it right on top of the bag as he rushed his throw, he might have had a chance. Now, it was going to be tough. Belt able to lay off that cutter. And the count is now full. Belt hitting seventh in the order. He'll be followed by Brandon Crawford. Get the new guys in there. Yeah, Sam Dyson, who just was activated today from the uh, Miami Marlins getting loose. Inside ball four. That puts two aboard with Crawford coming up. Well, Mike Maddox. Out to uh, 
introduce himself to Cole Hamels for an in-game visit. Mike, of course, always a very positive trip to the mound, no matter who's out there. But uh, Cole will get the benefit of, of the Mike Maddox uh, shoulder grab with that right hand. And the words of wisdom. Bobby Wilson out there, too. You know, Jeff Bannister was talking today. He was asked about uh, the two new catchers with this, the staff. And he said, well, you know, it's Chris Jimenez, as you uh, worked last night, has seen everybody on the staff, or almost everybody, because of you know, with him in spring training, that kind of thing. Bobby Wilson's going to have to go a crash course. But he said one thing in his favor. He's got Cole Hamels tonight to catch, so nobody's seen him in our club either. <laughs> That's a good point. But, you know, you think Bobby Wilson must have had a good education in learning how to catch at the big league level. Mike Sosha was his manager for a while, and yep. you'd have to think he would be a good catching mentor. He's probably a quick learner behind the plate. First pitch of Carver, double play ground ball. Elvis turns it, and Mike Maddox, along with Cole Nice, Hamels, nice conversation. <laughs> Put the double play message out there, and Cole Hamels executed it perfectly. 4-6-3, the Giants get a run, but after uh, six and a half, it is a 5-4 ball game. Now let's join Chuck Morgan as he introduces God Bless America. Remember the servicemen and women who are serving our country at home and around the world. This weekend is AT&T Military Weekend at Globe Life Park. On the field for God Bless America tonight, please welcome these special guests of AT&T and the Rangers, Lance Corporal Luis Cardenas, Lance Corporal Sean Reynolds, Lance Corporal Michael Bozinski, Lance Corporal Brian Renteria. Performing God Bless America tonight is Devin Crandall. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairie, 
at bat. It's the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment, at any moment. The in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat casts, and a whole lot more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Well, a 5-4 Ranger lead now. Giants uh, refuse to go away, but nice job of uh, getting the double play ball when needed by Cole Hamels to end the seventh inning. And now the Rangers come to bat looking for more as Chris Fielder faces Ryan Vogelsong, the fourth pitcher used tonight by Bruce Bochy. Vogelsong, a part-time starter, kind of a swing man for the Giants. With the injuries they've had on their pitching staff, he's getting a little more work as a starter than uh, they had planned. But until by 101 innings of work for Vogelsong in his 23rd outing tonight. And he has uh, been out there to stem the tide for the uh, Giants here in the seventh inning. Prince pops it up. Over to take a look, Duffy. He's going to run out of room as that ball's back seven rows. The Rangers get exactly what they were looking for. Pitch away. Left-hand hitter tried to pull it. Rolled it to the second baseman. who turned a simple double play. After the visit from Mike Maddox, who said, why don't you try the fastball away and get that <laughs> double play grounded a second? <laughs> two balls and two strikes to field. Prince is two for two tonight. He is singled and doubled. He's also walked. He has one run scored to his credit. And batting average now on the rise once again up to 330. He asked for time as Vogelsong was taking a little too much time. Now we're set to go. And another foul ball off to the left. Fielder came into play tonight as far as uh, the hits leadership. Second in Major League Baseball to Jason Kipnis. Prince now with 128 base hits this year. Kipnis entered play tonight with 132. Vogel song set. To center field. Coming on in a hurry as big and he can't get it. It is Bayern. Backed up by Maxwell. The throw to second. And in for the belly flop. Is Chris Fielder? Yeah, he was he was hustling all the way. He saw yeah. that ball drop, and he wasn't going to stop at first base. That pumps up the rest of his teammates too. They see the big guy hustling like that, stretching it into a double, it just infuses the bench with more energy. Got in, got in on his fist a little bit. Pagan can't quite get to it. He tries though. Tries to backhand it. Couldn't get to it. That's kind of a hard landing for the big guy out there. It was. But he got there ahead of the throw and the tag, and that's what's important. Now Beltre trying to move him over. What a line shot that uh, the young person took your advice. Todd brought his glove. He caught it? Yeah, he caught it. Boy, that was a rope. That was scorched. <laughs> I like Adrian's follow through. He's trying to go to right field to move the runner to third. <laughs> the two new guys, first time they've seen the big guy go in head first. <laughs> Usually the starting pitcher just kind of sits, sits there stoically and doesn't notice that kind of thing. Adrian taking a couple of shots at the right side and finds himself down on the count. No balls, two strikes. Beltre one for three tonight. A first inning single scored the second run of that Ranger uprising. A 260 average for Adrian Beltre. Trying to pick up fielder or at least move him over to third. Prince the leadoff double here in the seventh inning. Broken back, a rope in the center. That's in for a base hit. 
the business end of the bat over the dugout of the Giants into the seats. Beltre aboard, on to third goes Fielder, and everybody's okay in the stand, so it's all good. You know, there were, there were a couple of games when the Rangers were going through that bad spell where this is what happened to them. Balls were being blooped in one right after the other. And so it's nice to see that turn around a little bit today. The Rangers have had some bloopers fall in, some ground balls find holes. And if you want to play well and get something going, that's what you have to have. Sure, you've had to have to hit the ball hard. You have to hit some home runs. But in the meantime, to really make it click, you got to have these things happen, too. Adrian tried to go to right field a couple of times, got behind in the count, got sawed off, and still got a hit. Well, runners at the corners. Mitch Moreland at the plate takes the first pitch high for ball one. Moreland had that uh, two-run double in the first. He is one for three this evening, facing Vogelsong, who is primarily a cutter curveball type pitcher. And left handed so break that sinker out. Off speed, that is outside. Two and nothing. The Rangers, 11 hits tonight. The offense has uh, gotten it back in pretty high gear since the All Star break. Rangers are third in the American League. They came in hitting at 282 as a team. Got Fielder at third, Beltre at first. And Moreland going after that Vogel song pitch with a vengeance fouls it off. Moreland one for one. In the uh, only matchup that he's had against uh, Ryan Vogel song. And that one happened to leave the ballpark. Two balls and a strike. Now three balls and a strike. The Ranger hitters tonight have done a very good job of getting favorable counts by not expanding their strike zone. And Bowen has done that with Vogelson. Mitch back in. He can zero in for a spot and a pitch. Pop foul. That will uh, reach the seats. No full count. Rangers put two on, on the board in the first with Moreland's double. Brought home Beltre and Fielder. Giants took the lead with three in the third. Rangers came back to tie it in the fourth. And then uh, in the sixth inning, a two-run uprising. As the Rangers uh, out in front five to three, Giants came up one in the top of the seventh. Rangers trying to answer here. Three balls, two strikes. Beltre on the move, and the pitch is skied to right field. Could be deep enough to score Fielder. Pence with the tag, or the catch, the tag. Here comes Fielder. He will score. Sacrifice fly by Mitch Moreland. The Rangers get that run back. It's now a six to three, six to four game. Yeah, we're talking about getting some good fortune having balls fall in. The other side of it is capitalize on your good fortune by getting the runs home. And the Rangers have done that. Delino had a sacrifice fly in the sixth. Mitch gets the sacrifice fly here in the seventh. Bobby Wilson has had a couple of nice RBI hits with men in scoring position. It's one thing to, to get a little bit of luck and have some ball fall, balls fall in, but then you have to do something with it, make something happen, make those runs score. And Rangers have capitalized, and they've done that tonight yep. so far. I agree. Well, again, a two-run advantage for the Rangers at 6-4 to four is Josh Hamilton, 0 for 3. And that big swing and a miss is Vogelsong. Really pulling the string. Hamilton 0 for 2 against Vogelsong, and he has had a walk, one strikeout in those two at bats. Tonight, a fly ball and a couple of ground outs. Giants with the overshift on. They have the uh, third baseman Duffy playing in the normal shortstop spot. With Crawford and Panic splitting the difference uh, between second and first. 
0-1 pitch. One ball and one strike. Tanner Shepherds in the Ranger bullpen. Andy Hawkins, the uh, Ranger bullpen coach, assistant pitching coach out there, getting him ready, prepping him with uh, the information as to uh, who he probably will face in this next inning. Base hit right center field. That ball hit well. Over to cut it off is Pagan. On around the third is Beltre. Now the throw back, but Adrian able to sneak back to the bag. Hamilton with a solid single. Runners at the corner, still just one out. Jinsu Chu coming up. Yeah, that ball was ripped. That's one of the one of the hardest balls Josh has hit. Got that one right on the screws. Looked like it was headed to the wall. Pagan, good defensive player, closed the gap, cut it off before it could get to the warning track. In which case it would have been at least a double, maybe a triple. Adrian would have been able to score, but he gets over, cuts it off, gets it in quickly. Adrian going around second, hoping it gets in the gap. Tony Beasley telling him, hold up, big guy. <laughs> Leave it up to the next guy to get you in. So, three hits and a sacrifice fly. That's going to drive Vogelson from the game. Another pitching change underway at Globe Live Park. Rangers leading 6-4. Looking for more. We'll tell you about that when we come back right after this. closer at the Whataburger on Northwest Highway in Dallas. He'll be there this coming Wednesday. Register also for a chance to win four lower level tickets for the September 30th game against the Detroit Tigers. Plus, you get to meet Sean Thomas. The veteran left-hander, 38-year-old Javier Lopez on to face Shinsu Chu with runners at the corners and one out. Rangers leading 6-4, but they're looking for more. And this matchup, a little more favorable to Chu than uh, you might imagine. Shinsu is 3-for-6 lifetime against Lopez. Check swing on the pitch inside. Two balls and no strikes. Chu tonight is one for two officially. Rounded out to short in the second, then walked and scored in the fourth, doubled and scored in the sixth inning. He's hitting with Beltre at third and Hamilton at first. And that is outside. Three balls and no strikes. I'm sure the idea is for the lefty to come in and get the left hand hitter out, not to walk in and bring up Elvis. Got a right hand warming up in the bullpen. They've got eight guys out in the bullpen, so they've got plenty of guys out there to make all these pitching changes. And at this rate, 
They're going to see most of them. <laughs> Already have seen most of them. 3 0 pitch topped off the plate. The second they get one, the return, and they got them both. Just beat, and uh, Jeff Bannister is coming out saying, Wait a minute, didn't he drop the ball at first? And as he's doing that, the second base umpire, Alan Porter, making sure everybody stays on the on the field. Bannister talking to first base umpire Ben May. Now the question is, yeah, he dropped. No way he had that no. ball. Uh -uh. And they're going to go ahead and uh, put the headsets on. The challenge issued. Not much doubt from what we saw that uh, that ball was uh, bobbled and then dropped. Now they'll put the headsets on and get in contact with the replay command center back in New York. And again, the uh, call on the field was out. There has to be clear and convincing evidence. And 41,000 people here the who saw it on the big board and said that's clear and convincing. The, the other giveaway, Buzz, is the fact that the Giants never left the field. Yeah. I think they know exactly what happened. And I think when you see it in real time, you know what happened. Giants knew it. That didn't take long. It is reversed. Well, it turns into a fielder's choice ground out. Beltre scores. The Rangers put another on the board. It is now a 7-4 to four Ranger lead. The call is overturned. So the challenge, very beneficial for Jeff Bannister and the Rangers. And it also is going to get Javier Lopez out of the ballgame. He has gone after facing one hitter as Shinsu Chu gets an RBI on the Fielder's Choice ground down. Another pitching change underway here in Arlington. We'll tell you about the new giant pitcher when we come back right after this timeout on Fox Sports Southwest. John, thank you. They increased their lead over the Angels to three full games now. Angels uh, need to win to stay seven games back of the Astros. Yusmero Petit is now on. Uh, he becomes the third pitcher used in this inning by Bruce Bochy. Petit facing Elvis Andrews with Shinsu Chu at first. And the uh, official score here, Will Rudd has given an error to the uh, first baseman, Brandon Belt, for dropping that throw. And he, it's within his rights as an official score. If you can't assume a double play will be converted, but 
in that case, the double play was converted, and Belt just dropped the ball. So you can give an error, error in that kind of a, a situation. And what it does, it takes a, an RBI away from Chu. So he does not get an RBI on that. He instead, reaches on the uh, error to Brandon Belt. Elvis drives it to right center field. Pence back in the alley and makes the catch. And that'll do it. But the Rangers get uh, two big runs. Get two runs on three hits, one error, and one left. We're going to the eighth inning. It's now 7-4, to four, Rangers. You gotta give it to Maggie and Noel. They're celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary. Congratulations! This is like a ritual for you guys. Yes, we're. We, this is what we do every every year. Cruises are not important. The Rangers are to us. All right. Well, congratulations. Here's the bag. And any big plans after the game? Well, I think Noel decided he wants to go home to his bed and the three dogs. Okay. <laughs> Good for Noel. All right. First, let's hope he enjoys a Ranger victory. I right, appreciate it. Way to go. Congratulations. And go Rangers. There <laughs> we go. <laughs> Hector Santiago or Sanchez, the uh, catcher, is leading things off. Number nine man in the Giants order. Cole Hamill's back out there. Approaching the 90 pitch level tonight. Ground ball up the middle, but that's right where Odor is stationed. Uh, that. Fires on to first, one away. Back to the top of the order. Defensive change for the Rangers. Taking over in center field now, Leonis Martin. And he will bat in the leadoff spot in place of Delano to Shields. The one out here in the eighth inning. Angel Pagan now will face Cole Hamels. Cole has given up uh, four runs on seven hits tonight. He has walked just one. That came back in the seventh inning. His five strikeouts to his credit. Pagan has struck out twice against the left-hander tonight as he takes the sinker for strike one. Pagan 0 for 3, hitting 263. Switch hitter batting from the right side against Cole Hamels. That's out of play. He's gotten Pagan twice with changeups, and he's shown him two fastballs to start this at bat. So, changeup might not be coming on this pitch, but before the at bat's over, it will, unless he makes a mistake and he hits this ball. Nope, pretty high fastball. <laughs> Got him with that instead. In case he was thinking changeup. Yep. And I'd say, I better swing a fastball before he throws me a changeup. Now, six strikeouts for Hamels. He has the first two outs here in the eighth in short order. Oh, good pitch count for Cole. It's only 92 pitches here, almost through the eighth inning. Dugan, Joe Panic is one for three. And takes strike one. Cut fastball to the outside corner. 
Vanek had an RBI double and scored a run in the uh, third inning. Didn't really want to do it. Nothing in two. Well, if you're listening to uh, Rangers Live before the ball game, you heard Jake Deacon talk about uh, Cole Hamels, that he gets better as the game goes on. We've seen that tonight firsthand. Working as quickly, if not more quickly, here in the uh, latter stages of this ballgame. Well, based on what we saw from Jake Deacon last night, I wouldn't have had a problem trading a prospect or two for him. Yeah. Be able to add that kind of a quality left hander to the bullpen. I throw him 96, as you said last night, 96, 97 miles an hour. Easy. Sure looked like it. That night. That was getting on top of hitters pretty quick. That could be a key component to a winning team right there. Right center field. That's going to be down for a base hit. Our team trying to cut it off. He does deep in the alley. But into second with a two-out double. Joe Panic. Now Martin playing over shading toward left center. And he had to really take a deep route to uh, cut that ball off before it got to the wall and that, uh, that pretty much uh, sealed the fate of that base hit. Turned it in two for Panic and Jeff Bannister on his way to the mound signaling to the bullpen that he wants the right-hander to come in and a nice round of applause. 41,114. They are on their feet for Cole Hamill. got to feel great for the 31-year-old. Outstanding job here tonight. He will give way after seven and two-thirds innings of work, leading seven to four. Eight hit. Now, before we tell you about Tanner Shepherds, let's take a look at tonight's strongest fan photo. This one uh, sent to us this evening by Tanya. Hey, shot Tanya <laughs> out here at the ballpark. Very nice. If you folks would like to uh, have a chance to get your photo shown on our air, just use hashtag Southwest Data Strong Fan. And we might select yours to be shown right alongside Tanya's. It's all brought to you by folks at T Mobile. Tanner Shepard's on now and facing Matt Duffy. And Duffy shoots one to right field. That's headed toward the corner. It is down and going to the wall. Around third coming in the score is Panic. Into second with an RBI two-bagger is Matt Duffy. And it's a 7-5 Ranger lead. Matt Duffy driving in his second run of the night. And that closes the book on Cole Hamels. Five runs, all of them earned tonight. Duffy, very impressive rookie. Only 24 years old, batting third in the Giants lineup. 
Getting the job done right there. Big hit to right field. Cuts the gap and gives Posey a chance to bat as the tying run. Now Buster Posey homered his last time up. He is two for three tonight. And the breaking ball from Shepard settles outside and low for ball one. Posey handling the DH chores tonight. Kind of a half of a night off for him. Check swing on the breaking ball that hung, but it hung high enough that he couldn't pull the trigger. And Posey's been hot. Posey's driven in 27 runs in his last 27 games. Jake Deepman, who we saw last night, loosening in the bullpen. That was out of play to the right. The other thing about Posey, the Giants as a team don't strike out a lot. Posey really doesn't strike out very much. He's the third toughest hitter in the National League to strike out. And for a fourth place hitter, that's a little bit rare. And there's 11, almost 12 at bats between strikeouts. And one thing you'll notice between that list, among that list, he's the only guy in the middle of the lineup. That hits in the middle of the lineup. Most right. of those guys are not middle of the order kind of guys. Two and two, the count to him here. Tanner Shepard's trying to close the door on this inning, preserve what is right now a two run lead for the Rangers. Cole Hamels, after seven and two thirds innings, becomes a spectator tonight. Off the end of the bat to center. Coming on, Lonis Martin going out, Elvis, he can't get it. It drops for a base hit and gets by Martin, so Posey continues on to second. A bloop single. It is a 7-6 Ranger lead with the tying run at second base as Posey gets a bloop double. Well, there's an example with the tying run at the plate of the outfield playing deeper than normal so that you don't give up a double. You can see how deep Martin is in center field so that the ball can't be hit over his head. The other side of it is you're susceptible to that kind of a ball, a ball that normally would be caught that ends up falling in and turns into a double anyway. Well, back-to-back -back doubles, Matt Duffy, Buster Posey. It's a one-run game. Hunter Pence at the plate. 0 for 3 tonight. Shepard pours in strike one. Hunter Pence hitting at 292. Okay, two quick outs and three straight doubles. A wide variety of doubles. Loop to right and base hit. Posey coming around third. He will score as Chew has a late throw to the plate. And the Giants have come back to tie the ball game here in the eighth inning. It is 7-7. Seven seven. Well, give the Giants credit. Two outs, nobody on. They came back. A couple of fairly well hit doubles and then a couple of bloopers. Breaking ball, outside corner. Pence hit it right off the end of the bat. Just cued it barely to the outfield. Strong throw from Chu, but not in time. Well, with Maxwell, the scheduled hitter, Bruce Bochy went to the bench. Gregor Blanco is going to pinch hit, and with that switch in hitters, Jeff Bannister is going to go to the bullpen. He wants uh, Jake Diekman to come out of the pen. Tanner Shepherds gives up two doubles in a single, and we have a tie ball game now, and Jake Diekman will come into his second consecutive ball game for the Rangers. Well, pitching change again underway here at Globe Live Park. We'll take a timeout. We're back right after this.
straight night. Deakman worked an inning and two-thirds last night. Of uh, perfect relief for the Rangers. And he's on now to uh, try and preserve a tie. The uh, Giants have come up and tied this ball game in the eighth inning. They have scored three times. They have the go-ahead run at first. The person of Hunter Pence. And Greg Orblocko is going to face Deakman. The numbers for Jake last night, just 18 pitches to get those five outs. Forty-four percent of the runs with two outs for the uh, San Francisco Giants. That's one of the main reasons why they're giving the Dodgers a run for their money in the National League West. And one of the problems the Rangers have had is giving back leads this year. Right? They have had 20 losses out of their 52 so far that uh, they've had the lead in. Aiken getting ahead very quickly at Blocker. Those, those runs are truly two out runs. There was nobody on. And sometimes you already have some men on base and there's two outs. But this one, there's nobody on and two outs. Double, 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 single. Make a quick work. And Greg Orblanco, a 97 mile an hour heater. That'll do it in the eighth. But the Giants come back and tie it. Three runs on four hits with one left. Rangers coming to bat in a 7 7 ball game. The Rangers looking to break a seven all tie as we head to the bottom of the eighth here at Globe Life Park in Arlington. This game two of a three game series between the Giants and the Rangers. Game three will take place tomorrow afternoon here on Fox Sports Southwest. Two o'clock first pitch. Mike Leak getting his first start since being acquired by the Giants. And he'll take on a very hot hitting Elvis Andrews. Thanks to the folks at AT&T U-verse for filling us in on tomorrow's matchup, guys. All right, and thank you. Use Mero Petit going to work here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Rangers have Bobby Wilson, who is two for three, leading things off. He is the number nine man. And he pops up the next Petit pitch. It's behind home plate, back into the seats. Wilson, RBI singles in each of the fir uh, fourth and, s and eighth, uh, sixth inning tonight. Six, seven, eight, one of those things. The sixth inning, last one. Now six RBI for the year. Ground ball wide at third. Oh, picked by Duffy. Tough play for the young third baseman. He made it. One gone. Well, he went after that aggressively and confidently and picked a tough hop and turned it into an easy out. He might be headed to left field for a base hit. 
problem. Reaches out, snags the tricky hop. And the easy part, throwing it over to first base. A one away. Leonis Martin with his first at bat of the night. Took over defensively that last half inning. More Delano to Shields. And he takes high for ball one. Leonis at 220 with five home runs. 26 RBI. Had an at bat last night. Struck out in the uh, eighth inning. One and one. Leonis, well, since the All-Star break, has only had a couple of starts. He has uh, been in almost every game, defensively at some juncture. Outside, two and one. Martin, two for seven on this homestand. Petit back to the plate. Two and two. Petit. Satisfied with staying away from uh, Leonis. Next pitch to him. Got him swimming. Pulled the string, and Martin gone on strikes. Two away for Rugnet Odor. Martin with his first strikeout of the evening. Odor 0 for 4 tonight. Rugnet has grounded out twice, struck out, and flied out. Rangers with a dozen hits this evening. San Francisco with 11 of them. Ball one. Only error of the ball game. Came in the uh, seventh inning. A drop throw by Brandon Belt at first base for the Giants. Other than that, been a clean defensive game for both clubs. Padita Belt high set. And fires a strike. Now the right-hander ready to work. High ball to right, Pence. Waiting for it to come down, trotting in a couple of steps, and that'll do it. Padilla has a 1-2-3 inning. Rangers gone in order. We're going to the ninth at Globe Live Park in Arlington. Rangers 7 and the Giants 7.
seven as we head to the ninth inning. John Radigan here in the Captain Morgan Club getting ready for Rangers Live. Mark McLemore will join me. We will no doubt hear from Cole Hamill. What a great debut it was for him. We'll hear from whoever the hero is at this one as the Rangers will hopefully take care of business in the ninth inning. For now, though, we get it back over to you, Buzz and Tom. All right, John, thank you. Yeah, we uh, turn to the ninth inning. We turn to Sean Tolleson. Tolleson uh, picked up the win the yep. last walk-off the Rangers had. Was, uh, here on Thursday night against the Yankees. And John uh, now three and two, a 3.18 ERA. Worked in last night's game, gave up one run in one inning of work. Facing the bottom third of the Giants' order, Brandon Belt starting off and takes strike one. Belt one out of two tonight. Had a home run leading off the third inning against Cole Hamels. Rounded out, then walked his last time up. That was in the seventh. Nothing in two. That ball just disappearing down out of the strike zone. Rangers have Rugnet Odor on the right side of the diamond out in right field. A huge, <laughs> huge gap that's uh, opened up between Odor and the shortstop, Elvis Andrews, primarily because of where they're playing depth-wise. One ball, two strikes. Got him swinging. Good changeup. John Tolleson gets the punch out, one gone. Yeah, when Sean's at his best, that changeup is working for him, so he doesn't have to just rely on being a power pitcher. Going with his fastball, hard breaking ball. And you can mix in that changeup. That really gives the hitter another thing to think about. And that's a good changeup. Perfectly located. Yep. Big change of speed. Belt's been swinging the bat really well tonight. And Sean got him with the off speed stuff. Well, the all important first out. Now here's Brandon Crawford. Crawford won for three with a double. Working, keep using it. Yep. Exactly. Crawford a 268 average. He doubled and scored in the third inning. Dollison back to the plate. Tried it again. But, uh, just left that one low and outside. Well, lately, John Dollison has been uh, used and used frequently. John's appeared in the last four ball games now. The last two of the Yankees in uh, both games of this series. Out of play to the left. One ball and two strikes to Crawford. Crawford hit the home run last night off of uh, Sean Tolleson. In that ninth inning, kind of a, I'm not going to say meaningless, but it didn't have much to do with the outcome of the game. It turned a 6-2 Ranger win into a 6-3. Check swing, did he go? Yes, he did. Went well, with an off-speed pitch, not the changeup, looked like a breaking ball. Third base umpire Mark Rippinger said, yeah, you're out of there. Let's take a look. Yep, overhand curveball it looked like. And definitely swung. Crawford knew it. Hoping to get the call, but he knew he swung. Casilla and Strickland. Casilla the closer for the Giants. Two outs. Hector Sanchez the catcher. Goes after the first pitch. It's a towering pop-up on the infield. Elvis and Beltre. It'll be Elvis Andrews making the catch. And that'll do it. John Tolleson works a perfect top of the ninth. So the Rangers will come to bat with Fielder, Beltre, and Moreland in a 7-7 ball game when we come back.
TNT Universe Rewind tonight. And uh, from the Yankee Series, how about the walk-off by Josh Hamilton? Driving home, Leonis Martin in the bottom of the ninth inning. Rangers getting that W in uh, walk-off fashion and the beneficiary of that as far as the win was concerned. was the man that would be the beneficiary tonight. And that is Sean Thomas. We'll see if Lightning can strike a couple of times in the last few days. Hunter Strickland, big right-hander, a hard-throwing right-hander. 26 years old out of Thomason, Georgia. 6'4", about 220 pounds. Strickland uh, claimed off waivers the year before last from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Made his major league debut last year with the Giants, worked in nine ball games. And on here. Facing Prince Fielder, and he shoots one right at the shortstop. Crawford didn't have to move an inch. And yeah, Prince Fielder, probably the hardest ball he's yeah. hit all night. Not much you can do about that. Sometimes they fall in for you, and sometimes line drives are caught. Seeing a little bit of both for Prince tonight. Had a blooper fall in, and this bullet is right straight at the shortstop. It's still a three-hit night so far for Prince. As hard as he has hit the ball this evening. And he's uh, retired for the first out. Now Adrian Beltre, who is two for four. The slider from Strickland. Strickland, uh, a fastball slider type pitch. That's about uh, all he features coming in to the ball game out of the bullpen. Maybe an occasional change, but uh, pretty much coming at the, at the hitters with the hard stuff. Pence coming in from right. Has it. Tugon. So Tugon base is empty. A 7-7 ball game. Here comes Mitch Marlin. Mitch has driven in three runs tonight. Had a two-run double in the first inning and a sacrifice fly in the seventh inning. Don't have any uh, Ranger hitters that have had experience at the big league level against Hunter Strickland. And he pumps in strike one at 97 miles an hour. Uh, doubled into the right field corner back in the first inning. Also skied to left, grounded to first. And his sacrifice fly to right. Got the uh, second run of the seventh inning in for the Rangers. Sanchez kind of got handcuffed by that sinker from Strickland. One ball, one strike. Since the start of the second half, the Giants bullpen has been great. 067 ERA. The Rangers have gotten to the bullpen a little bit today, though. They scored four runs against the Giant bullpen. Looked like it was going to be a pretty good, pretty safe lead. Three run lead. Giants got three with two outs and nobody on, though, in the eighth inning. Strickland coming after that good, sharp breaking ball. It's one and two now to Mitch. Orland hitting at 285. Just those batting gloves and kind of adjusts his thinking also. And seeing Strickland's breaking pitch for the first time. Hunter Strickland, a 26-year-old Georgian. He is set at the letters. Looping line drive and the second baseman Patty playing out on right field. The Rangers go one, two, three in the ninth inning. We're going to go to extra innings here tonight. A 7-7 ball game at Globe Live Park in Arlington.
turkey all season long. Jack Link Beef Jerky, feed your wild side. The Giants came back to tie this ball game with uh, three runs in the eighth inning. They just couldn't do anything in the ninth, so we'll go to the tenth. And another new Ranger, Sam Dyson. Hard throwing right hander who the Rangers got from the uh, Miami Marlins. Shooting Tomas Davies down to Miami in exchange. Dyson, a 27 year old out of the Tampa Bay area. He was claimed off waivers by the uh, Marlins from the Toronto Blue Jays back in the winter uh, before the 2013 season. He made his debut with Toronto back in 2012. Had some arm problems, uh, had Tommy John surgery, and Marlins got him and worked 31 games with Miami last year. Yeah, nice, nice first opportunity, too. Going right into the fire. Tenth inning tie game. Great opportunity to come in and get yourself a win. Get a little shutout inning. Saw that 95 mile an hour sinker that he features. Rangers really love his arm. Listening to uh, John Daniels yesterday talk about that, a power sinker. Boy, he has one, too. I talked to a couple of scouts in the press dining room the other night who had seen Tyson and had very nice things to say about him. Dyson at 6-1, about 210 pounds. And a stocky right-hander. 1-1 one, one pitch. And Pagan loops one to right for a base hit. A leadoff single here in the 10th by Angel Pagan. He is one for five, but more importantly, he's aboard to start the 10th for the Giants. Looked like a changeup that he threw. Pagan is out in front of it and just kind of strokes it into the outfield. Softly hit single. Been a few of those tonight for both teams. So the hits now are even at 12 apiece. Runs it even at seven. Sam Dyson trying to keep it that way. Joe Panic, who is two for four with a pair of doubles. Dyson going to go to work. On uh, Angel Pagan over there at first. Pagan with very good speed. Panic with an RBI tonight. He scored both times. He's been on base with the double. He takes outside. One ball, no strikes. Dyson went to uh, the University of South Carolina. Freshman All American in 2008 down there. Chopper slowly hit to Moreland. Thinks about second and thinks better of it. Yeah, just wouldn't hit hard enough. Yeah, good, good thought. But yeah. Good decision by Mitch to yeah. take the sure out at first. Pagan into scoring position. But there is one out. Love to get uh, that. Matt Duffy coming up. Love to get that lead runner if you can, but he made the right decision. You don't have much of an angle to throw either from that position. The runner's going to be right in your line of sight. Yeah, and you see Pagani bowed in toward the toward the uh, grass. Yeah. So that he can get in between uh, Mitch and Elvis Andrews. Duffy rounds one to the right side. And we get Odor will throw him out on to third. Goes Pagani. He's there with two outs, however. And Buster Posey coming up. Well, there's that. The result of that good heavy sinker, a couple of ground outs. Well, Posey coming up, and uh, Mike Maddox on his way out to uh, have a little chat with the battery. Sam Dyson and Bobby Wilson. No doubt to discuss, uh, well, not remind him what Posey has done tonight, but to tactfully discuss, maybe you want to be careful with this guy, huh? <laughs> he's, he's been, we've mentioned him a number of times. He's been hot. Knocked in 28 runs in the last 27 games. Had three hits tonight. Home run. He had a double in the eighth inning. Fell in. Ended up with an RBI on it. Yeah, so he's a triple shy of the cycle. This seems to be a popular, uh, popular event here in the last few weeks. 
lot of coming cycles. close. A lot of cycles going on. And getting one. Yeah. So the discussion is uh, finished. We'll see what the upshot of it was. Sam Dyson will take that sicker to take it to work against Buster Posey. Bobby Wilson back down behind the plate. First pitch to Posey. At the knees at 97. What's around that sinker? That's always a good option, I would think, to almost anybody. Throw your sinker. Just throw it three miles an hour harder. <laughs> <laughs> the go-ahead run at third with two outs. Angel Pagan over there. And that pitch in at the knee. And how about throwing one right on top of the other? Yeah, regardless how this ending ends, you just have to love the two arms the Rangers just added in the bullpen. Dyson and Dukeman. Crowd getting into it here in this 10th inning. No balls, two strikes. Posey just able to get a piece of that pitch. starts an outside door right now. Fans on their feet. They want to see a conclusion at the top of this 10th inning. Slowly hit out toward Odor. Yeah, that sick is not the bats right out of their hands. Great job by Sam Dyson to work around the leadoff single. Three ground balls. The Giants are gone. Rangers will come to bat in the bottom of the 10th inning. Hamilton Chu and Andrews 7-7 to score. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By AT&T U-verse TV. U-verse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. And by your Texas Ford dealer. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer to kick off the summer right. Ford is the best in Texas. Well, many in this crowd of uh, 41,000 on their feet during the uh, break between the half innings. Chuck Morgan, the Rangers director of In Park Entertainment, inciting them with uh, the pleas for more noise. And they were giving it to him, too. Josh Hamilton starting things off. The first pitch from Hunter Strickland is high and away for ball one. Hamilton singled sharply his last time up, lining a base hit to right center field. One for four tonight. Strickland had a perfect ninth in. Back out there for the tenth. Took something off that, and Hamilton geared up for 98. Got 88 instead. Yeah, the Giants have used six relievers 
They've got a couple of them left because they started out with eight. They got a little bit of a break and Strickland was able to get through his first inning so quickly. Less than 10 pitches. Make them throw 20 or 22 pitches last inning. They might have had to gone to their seventh reliever this inning instead of being able to use him again. Yep. Pitcher's call on strike on pitch number three right there. The one two coming from Strickland. Josh on the fist and Josh able to fight it off foul. Strickland a, a plus arm. He can really rush the ball to home plate, but he also has pretty good other pitch. He's that uh, sharp slider that we've seen. Also that straight changeup that he will mix in there. Staying away from Hamilton predominantly. Another one two pitch is on the way. Popped up. And, uh, Duffy drifting into foul territory. That is out number one. Well, Hamilton fouls out. Now Strickland will face Shinsu Chu. Chu one for three tonight. He has walked and scored, doubled and scored, and reached on an error. Strickland's first pitch, off speed and in for strike one. Chu doubled, starting off the, or I should say with one out in the Rangers' sixth. That started a two-run rally for the Rangers. In tight. Chu with a baker's dozen worth of home runs this year. 13 of them, 48 runs driven in. Look at him that power changeup. Down and away, and Chu now down on the count, one and two. What both these teams now have been able to rush some arms out to the uh, to the mound that can get the ball to home plate in a hurry. That's for sure. Still one and two. I guess that's, to me, that's probably the biggest change in baseball in the last two decades. The number of great arms yeah. you have at the tail end of the bullpen. Yep, no doubt about it. Every team has several guys that can throw the ball 95 to 97 miles an hour. Don't see it quite as much in starting pitchers before the guys in the bullpen. Yeah, that's what teams are looking for. Power arms. Rangers added two of them. Dyson and Deekman. Call strike three. She was a little upset with uh, Jeff Kellogg, the home plate umpire, but Kellogg has been fairly consistent on his pitch. Just off where our tracker says the uh, strike zone is. That's a tough one. That's that's the top of the strike zone. And it's a little bit outside. Pitch is going to have a lot of success if that pitch yeah. has a strike all day long. So two out. Here's Elvis. Andrews two for three this evening. A single, a double, a walk, and a fly out to right. Elvis walked back in the sixth and came in to score. An average of 258 as he faces Strickland here. Bottom of the tenth in a 7-7 ball game.
Giants this year are four and two in extra innings. They're a perfect three and zero on the road. Meanwhile, the uh, Rangers line drive up the ladder was Duffy. And Elvis has a base hit taken away from him. Rangers three and three and two and two here at home in extra innings. We're going to go to the 11th. Still tied at seven. All season long, Jack Link's Beef Jerky, feed your wild side. Now everything is even tonight. Seven runs on seven and 12 hits for both ball clubs. Sam Dyson back out to work his second inning. Gave up a leadoff single in the 10th inning, but then got three very quick ground balls. And he'll start things off facing Hunter Pence. It'll be Pence, Blanco, and Belt for the Giants. Well, the Rangers kind of benefited from Sam's quick inning. He only threw 10 pitches, so he's back out for his second frame. Pence slicing at that first pitch, and it's back out of play. I really love the movement, of getting that ball in on this right there at 95 mm -hmm. miles an hour. With above average movement, I think you'd have to say. Pence tonight, one for four. RBI single that knotted this ball game up. He drives this from the left field. Hamilton stops. He's watching it. That ball's gone. Hunter Pence with his sixth home run of the year gives the Giants an 8-7 to seven lead. Now both hits that Sam has given up have been change-ups. And the Pagan hit to start the 10th inning turned out to be harmless. This one, though, turned into a home run. Pence, the UTA product, and, uh, the sixth home run of the year, a leadoff home run here in the 11th inning. The Giants have the lead for the first time since the second inning. Not Gregor Blanco. He is 0 for 1. Blanco came on as a pinch hitter in the eighth inning and struck out for Maxwell. Dyson with the 2-0 pitch. That is a strike, 2-1. and one. Chopper out toward Elvis and Short. One gone. The block on grounds out. Now Brandon Belt will come up.
most of this crowd of 41,000 plus stayed around tonight. Not really thrilled with what they've seen so far in this inning, but there is hope uh, for the bottom of the 11th, and that's going to do it for Sam Dyson. Dyson goes an inning and a third tonight. Gives up a couple of hits and one run, and he will uh, depart for Sam Freeman. Left-hander coming on now to face Belt and Crawford. Eight to seven in favor of the Giants. We'll be back after this timeout on Fox Sports Southwest. Now an extra inning. Sam Freeman to take over here in the top of the 11th inning. Sam Freeman appearing in his 37th ball game now. Left-hander with that 292 ERA and an opponent's batting average is 222. Last time we saw Sam, uh, night before last against the Yankees. Brandon Belt is one for three tonight with a home run. And he went around. It is Jeff Kellogg, the home plate umpire, for strike one. Belt at 275 now with uh, 11 home runs and 44 driven in. That ball's hit well to left center field. Leonis Martin on his horse into the alley. That ball is gone. Brandon Belt, a two home run night. And he takes one in to the Giants bullpen. Another solo shot, and the Giants lead it 9-7. to seven. That belt came into the game with only 10 home runs, but he's shown better power than that tonight. Two home runs against left-handed pitchers. He drove the ball the other way. Put that ball up in the air and just shot out of here. What a carry. I knew he hit it well, but he hit it maybe even a little bit better than it looked coming off the bat. Sure did. Now here's Crawford, first ball swinging. He tops one on the first baseline. It stays in foul territory. Nothing in one. Oh, two home runs in the inning. And four for tonight for the Giants. Giants came in with 83 home runs on the year. That was 10th in the National League. Now up to 87. No balls and a strike to Brandon Crawford. He pops this one up. Coming back, uh, Bobby Wilson, but he's going to run out of room. That's back about four rows. The count goes to nothing and two. And Sam Freeman. Not many home runs allowed this year. As a matter of fact, that's the first home run that he's given up since his first appearance in a Ranger uniform back on the 14th of May. 
Give up a home run right here against uh, Eric Hosmer of the Kansas City Royals. And this home run to uh, Brandon Belt, just the second home run that Freeman has given up in 37 appearances. One ball, two strikes to Crawford. Two and two. Sam reading the signs. And the left-hander is ready. Foul straight back. Watch out. Nine runs on 14 hits for the uh, Giants. Seven runs on 12 hits for the Rangers. Got him swinging. That is out number two. And it will bring up Hector Sanchez. Hector, Hector Sanchez. Well, Sam Freeman with a punch out. Now Sanchez, who is 0 for 4, will come up. Is uh, turning around once again to hit from the uh, right side of the plate. Three ground outs and a pop out tonight for the Giants backup catcher. Looking toward the uh, bottom of the 11th inning. Be Bobby Wilson to lead things off for the Rangers, the number nine hitter. Back to the top of the order, Leonis Martin and Rugnet Odor. Two balls, no strikes. And you would have to think that Santiago Casilla, the closer for the Giants, would be uh, summoned to uh, work that the 11th inning. And there is the big fella. Two and one. night for uh, Sanchez extra innings probably uh, drop seven eight pounds guys coming out of uh, the cooler climbs like San Francisco it really takes a takes a toll on them to come into this heat 2-2 Two -two pitch full count they were talking to Mike Kruko one of the TV announcers for San Francisco. He got here, it was 100 degrees, said it was 58 degrees when I left San Francisco. <laughs> Slowly hit the third, Beltre waits and throws from down under to get Sanchez. That'll do it, but a couple of solo home runs for the Giants. They take the lead, will go to the bottom of the 11th, 9-7 San Francisco.
run. So the Rangers come to bat, needing two to uh, continue the ball game, three to go on home of the W. And Santiago Casilla, the closer for the San Francisco Giants, on to uh, pitch this 11th inning. 26 saves and 30 opportunities for the uh, 35-year-old right-hander out of the Dominican Republic. Casilla has been a giant since 2010. Originally was with the Oakland A's. That's where uh, Ranger fans will remember him from. Up and down for uh, the better part of five years with the A's. And he has found a home across the bay in at and Park. Adam Rosales will lead off as a pinch hitter. First ball swinging, shoots one to Crawford. A giant shortstop throws out Rosales. A one pitch and one away. Well, for a while, the Rangers had some balls falling in. Lately, hard hit balls have been caught. Fielder had a shot to shortstop. Elvis had a shot to third. That ball by Adam was hit hard right on the nose to shortstop. The holes are drying up. Saw that note on Casilla. Five blown saves, the fewest in the National League. Leonis Martin takes a breaking ball, low it inside for ball one. Martin over one time. Later the ball game defensively in the top of the eighth. Struck out in the bottom of the eighth. It was only a bat. Hitting at 219. Sinker right at the bottom for strike one. You see a couple of different speeds of breaking ball. And that good sinker. Giants don't have many relievers in that later stage of the bullpen that are uh, on the young side. They've got a bunch of veterans down there. And Bruce Bochy manages them very well, manages their appearance and their ups and downs, and their appearances quite well. One, two. Now off to the left. Leonis trying to get aboard here with one out in the 11th inning. He's got Rube Den Odor waiting to be next. Got him swinging. Elevated it with a little extra on it. Casilla gets the strikeout, and the Rangers are down to their final out. Odor 0 for 5 tonight. A couple of fly balls, a couple of ground balls, and a strikeout. They're trying to keep things alive here in the 11th inning. See if the Rangers can just get back and tie this ball game and send it further into extra innings. Odor shoots it out of play down the left side and back into the seats. Be a tough way to welcome uh, Cole Hamels to your ball club. Hamels left after uh, seven and two thirds tonight with the uh, lead well intact, seven to five at that time. But unfortunately, the Giants tied the ball game in that eighth inning. It's a base hit by Bolt by Odor, and the Rangers have life here in the 11th. Well, that's what you hope for, Buzz. Get someone on. You got Fielder, Beltre, Moreland, the next guy's middle of the lineup. Need two runs. Hard to string together four or five hits, but one swing of the bat now can tie it. Curve ball down and in. He didn't have that ball just barely by Belt. Go for him. Just missed it by about a foot. Well, here's a man that can leave the ballpark with uh, one swing of the bat that you're talking about, Tom. Yep. It's been a while for Prince. About time that he did. 15 home runs for the year fielder. With three hits tonight, Odor going to second on defensive indifference. Breaking ball uh, caught the strike zone. Fielders had a pair of doubles and a single. He has scored a run. 
Also had a walk this evening. Casilla reading the signs. Captain Sanchez flashing them out. Rolling inside. Nice job by Sanchez to prevent that from going to the backstop. Fielder just one previous at bat against the Santiago Casilla. Oh for one. Trying to pick up Odor, get the Rangers a run closer. Foul back. One ball and two strikes now. To see it, and the closer's role in 2012 had 25 saves. Picked it up again last year. For the most part, and had 19 saves and 54 appearances. The one-two pitch coming. Breaking ball, call strike three. And Fielder knew it. Well, Casilla comes in, gives up a two-out single to Odor, but that's as close as the Rangers can get. And the Giants storming back by uh, tying the ball game with three in the eighth, scored two in the eleventh. On a pair of solo home runs and defeat the Rangers tonight in Cole Hamill's Ranger debut by a count of 9-7 to seven in 11 innings. We will come back and give you some totals. Get you ready for Rangers Live right after this on Fox Sports South. 